It's week four of the NFL, and we'll see Tylen Wallace. He should be one of his quarterback's best friends this week. It's the Ravens and the Saints, and it's coming up next on EA Sports. It is always a celebration here in the city of New Orleans, and we are just outside of the French Quarter at the Superdome. Today, it's week four, and we've got what should be a great one here, as it'll be the Baltimore Ravens taking on the New Orleans Saints. 
With Charles Davis, as always, I'm Brandon Gordon. Charles, you talk about storylines in this one. I think it begins and ends with our two quarterbacks, certainly two of the best in the business. And nowadays, I don't think you can get by for long periods of time without a top-flight quarterback. The way the game is played, with all the responsibility he has and how the game flows through him, if he's not on the top of his game, your team's not going to benefit at all. It's 3-0 versus 2-1, a good early season battle as we're underway in Week 4. And this will go as a touchback, and they will begin things at the 25. And here come the Saints for their opening drive. And a look here at the veteran under center, their seventh-year quarterback. I guess we have to nickname him the thrower, aren't we, or something After like that. After last week? I mean, man, you're talking about over 400 yards throwing the ball. The running backs... They'll come out throwing here on first down. Oh, he's going to air it out right away. Complete. Took a shot. Couldn't connect. Try to get that one to Chris Olave. That'll bring up second down. Yeah, look at this Baltimore defense. They were very good in the win last week against Jacksonville. And what I saw, taking it right down Broadway. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark it down at the 49. That one covers 24 yards. It's a first down. First run of the game for Jameer Gibbs, the Alabama product. And just one yard here from the 49 to the 50. They work now on second and nine. Another run for Gibbs here. And good penetration here. He'll get this down only to about the 49-yard line. The Ravens bring out an extra defensive back here on third. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. He lets it go deep for Alave. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Brandon Stevens. And the Ravens are going to take possession of the football as they force the turnover on the opening drive. I really don't think you can fault the decision-making here because your offensive quarterback, they really had a big week last week, and you're ready for them to go again here. Not the anticipated result, of course, but you definitely understand why they did what they did. That quarterback's been hot. You want to keep the ball in his hands and see if he can keep the magic going. A number eight, Lamar Jackson, trotting onto the field at quarterback, ready to lead this Ravens offense. And you and I both know that any win is a good win, and that's what they did last week. But there's also plenty for him to work on in his game, wasn't there? Yeah. Two touchdowns, an Had interception. Yeah, you know, he wants to increase that a little bit in terms of ratio. But first and foremost, they did win the game. And this intercepted on the first play of the game. Derek Stingley picks it. And they finally put it into this return, but not before he's all the way down to the 37. Well, their defense got him the football with an interception. They trot out there, Charles, in the very first play. They give the football right back. <laughs> Brand, I almost expect you coming like an auctioneer. We've got two, we got two. Do I hear three? Remember, it was two in a row. Will we hit three in a row? Because these offenses, they've got to be a little bit more careful as they go forward. These defenders. They're locked in and really focused. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. 33 yards that time. You can feel the effort all the way up here. He tried his best to get there. Didn't quite make it, but down around the two, three yard line. Got to love the effort, and especially the big play that gave his offense a great opportunity. First and goal from the three. And he's going to use his legs here. And holding it may be the wrong decision as he stopped in the backfield. Now a pause, and there's an injured Raven in need of some assistance. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. Back at the five-yard line now, second and goal. 
Straight ahead with Gibbs here. And he's going to get him about three yards closer. He's down to about the two. That run didn't get very far, and I think when you're looking at his dimensions, he's a little bit on the smaller side. He's counting on the big guys up front to escort him in, and they couldn't create any kind of space for him, could they? Yeah, didn't get the push they needed. And that one going nowhere from the start as he's met in the backfield and goes backwards. This defense is a difficult one to prepare for, one of the best in the league. They'll come at you from all angles, and they did a nice job there stopping him for a loss. And his kick is good. So he's been automatic to this point of the season, and he connects on the field goal there. And what a luxury it is to have a kicker you can depend upon, partner, because he hasn't missed all year long. Converts on that one as well. And kudos to you. You didn't jinx him. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. Baltimore set to take over here for their second possession of the game. They threw an interception the first time they had the football, only gave up three points off of that, so it shouldn't be a difficult hole to overcome. It really shouldn't as long as they're not listening to the chatter coming from the other side because when you throw a pick, look, I know defensive backs, they have a tendency to be a little bit loud after they take one away, but they also have a tendency to gamble a little bit more thinking they'll get a second one. Maybe they can take advantage of that with some double moves. First carry for the Iowa State man, Brees Hall. And boy, showing how tough he can be to bring down, just fighting his way forward to pick up seven yards. But taking a look at Hall's numbers from a week ago, pretty good as he found himself in the end zone on two separate occasions. And those are the most important numbers because no matter what you pile up prior to the goal line, Getting in is all that matters. Putting those numbers up on the board, and they love them when they're sixes. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Jackson. A little short pass here taken in by Laporta. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. From the 35, back to work on second and four. Play action. Now Jackson. His throw taken in by Isaiah Likely. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. And they just keep marching right along. First down on a pickup of eight there. Jackson. A quick throw there is incomplete. So it looks like they stopped some fight in them on this series because it seemed like things were headed for the red zone. But this defense gets two more stops. They can keep them out of that area. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw. It's knocked away and incomplete. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Now it's Jackson. Work in the middle of the field. He's got a man complete. And in for the Ravens touchdown. Tylen Wallace, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Ravens have answered that early field goal to take a first quarter lead. As a fan, is there anything prettier than a well-executed post route? No, it's a thing of beauty, especially when it's done like that for a touchdown. Uh, the throw, the catch, and how about the run after to get it to the end zone? No going for two. They'll kick the point after. He's got it. They'll see that opening drive field goal and raise it a touchdown, and that makes it 7-3. to three. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This fielded right at the goal line. Oh, some strong running. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30, up to the 33. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Now this throw caught left side. And out 
across midfield down to the 45. Last play, they got stuffed at the line. Different story here, over 20 yards. It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. On first and ten, here's Gibbs. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. The Saints at 3-0 here in the month of September. And they've got to be pleased with the start of this season, obviously. Yeah, and you're talking about three good quality wins. It's got people in the locker room excited. Not overly so, but that quiet confidence is starting to build. They're starting to believe that this could be their year if they stay on track. Here is third down and four. He'll look to throw. Oh, he had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. Well, how about the coverage we just saw him break out on third down? Dime defense, blanketed the field with extra defensive backs and speed, unable to find an open hole to complete that pass. Now on fourth down here, that pass knocked away and incomplete. The Saints' decision to go for it backfires. And the Ravens are going to get the football back. No surprise. They try to throw the ball on fourth down, but it gets batted down. They don't pick it up. A little football 101. When you're going toward that quarterback, you see he's going to start to throw. Get your hands up, Get right? your hands up, affect the play, and then everyone, get your hands up. When the ball gets to the receiver, moment of truth, knock it away. Now a throw over the middle, and he's got it to start the drive. And they'll get to him after a gain of seven to the 47. Ball on the 47-yard line. Here's second and three. They go play action with Jackson. Throw left side complete. That's Hall. Well, this defense for the Saints, they were terrific last week in the victory over Kansas City. And no matter what's done throughout a ball game, it always comes back to blocking and tackling. That's the essence of football. But I think it's hard for people to understand just how difficult it is to tackle, especially open field. Very few missed tackles on tape that I saw last game. This team does a nice job of getting their opponents on the ground. Now Jackson on first down. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. Jackson now. Oh, and that is incomplete. Tylen Wallace, the intended receiver, and it's third down. When you look at the Saints' defense, right now they're ranked number 29 in the NFL against the pass, so fourth from the bottom, Charles. When they lack in pass defense, they do make up for it in run defense, a top 10 unit against the people trying to move the ball on the ground. This is a passing league. So there's a conundrum for them. How do they get better defending the pass? So now they're going to send out the field goal unit to, as they say, fire away from long distance. And this one is no good. He missed it. And this will stay a four-point game. Well, Brandon, anything beyond 50, you start rolling the dice a bit. And once you get up around 57, 58 yards, the chances of making it go down dramatically. And sure enough, this one winds up no good. Back out onto the field now comes the New Orleans offense. A kind of a lucky break on the prior drive, Charles. The turnover on downs that the offense had didn't come back to bite them after the other side. Their defense came through and was able to hold them without any points. I would agree with you, partner. A little bit of a lucky break indeed, but you know what they'd say to us. No luck, just pure skill. We rose to the challenge, and we didn't permit a score. That's how we roll. Well, I'm kind of curious, Charles, if they might temper their aggressiveness now offensively if they get in that fourth down spot again. Yeah, one would think so, but maybe because they held it, they might go for it again. 17 there in a New Orleans first down. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there. And it's second down.
They'll set up to throw. Oh, he'll want that one back. Incomplete. He doesn't drop too many in that department. Third down. Looking to throw. And he's going to go down here. A sack. They push him back to the 34. Travis Jones in there to get him, and that is sack number six now for him on the year. You know darn well both of these teams reviewed the film and saw that this defense had five sacks last week. they got to keep their QB upright. And they're going to try their best to do exactly that. But they're facing a team where getting to the quarterback is a mindset. It's a mantra for them. And they play a game within the game, and you know what it is? Let's race to the quarterback and see who gets there first. And this one is right down the middle. And they'll get it back within a point at 7-6. to six. So as it turns out, that sack doesn't wind up costing them, Charles. They at least get points, get three of them. Yeah, that's where your kicker can really come to your rescue because you know after the sack, there was a little consternation there. Are we out of field goal range? Are we going to be able to get three? In this case, he stepped right up and gave them exactly what they needed. Brees Hall helped leading out this offense for another series. First month of the season, those numbers, pretty solid. Does he continue that? I think so, because when you come out of the gate this strong, that means that you have planned for it and you like the results that you're getting. So I wouldn't have any doubt that the head coach, offensive coordinator, actually called in, the, it called him in and said, look, you're our guy, okay? We're going to continue to stick with this as long as we're winning games. You ready for the challenge? And then they presented it to the rest of the team. And I think we'll see plenty of that as the season moves on. And I'm sure he said challenge accepted. After one, a one-point game, 7-6. to six. Raven football here as we begin quarter number two as they've got it second and seven off the play fake here's Jackson and that went too far in front he couldn't reel it in it's incomplete oh boy partner did that just happen I got my hand over my eyes right now because like him like is going to haunt my dreams too he was wide open how did he overthrow him there uh, defensively just very lucky you know that they got away with one there and oh, he's just going to be short here, barely. Maybe by a half a foot. It'll be fourth and inches. That looked great when he first took off because in my mind, there was room to run and he had the marker in his sight. But I certainly didn't expect him to close so quickly and neither did he. They got to him just in time and now that forced him to make a decision with his fourth down call. They only punted twice in the win last week as he gets this one away. Yeah, he was looking for the checkup bounce, didn't get it. That scoots all the way into the end zone now for a touchback. The New Orleans offense back out and ready to go. Last time out, you remember their drive stalled, but thanks to their kicker, booted a long field goal to at least get him three. Now here they'll try to do better and find the end zone. And in our experience, how much fun is it for coaches to know that they've got a kicker who can nail it from long distance? Now the hard part is, as an offensive play caller, you don't want that in your head too much where you're relying on it. And he goes out and gets the job done for them. But I'm quite sure he would be content to just kick extra points from here on out. Yeah, absolutely. No I think his teammates would be okay with him just kicking the extra points as well. Now a timeout as they tend to the injured player and not the man they would want to see. That's Chris Alave getting medical attention. Well, the medical staff is going to come out here and take a look. And we will take a short break. Gibbs straight ahead. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. That's a really nice, tough run inside, and they gained five yards on it. And to be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to have five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Counter play. Here's Gibbs. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Defensively, though, they had a chance there to hit him for a loss. Couldn't get it done. Looked like someone was able to knife into the backfield, but he wasn't able to get him down. But his compatriots, they were able to grab him at the line of scrimmage and not let him get any further downfield. So the completion good for six yards, and now it's third and three. Third and three. 
Back to throw. It completes it right side of the line. And he'll be tackled about two yards shy of the line to gain. A one-yard pickup leads to fourth down. They'll try and run for it. And he will not even make it back to the line of scrimmage. The Saints' decision to go for it backfires. And the Ravens are going to get the football back. Even though they didn't get it, probably the right call. Too long for a field goal and just not a whole lot to gain from a punt there. Yeah, you wouldn't have really netted very much yardage if you pumped the ball, right? And the thing about a field goal, and you know this from so much experience, the longer the field goal, the lower it comes out off the kick, right? Which means it's got a better chance of being blocked. So you're taking a chance either way. I like the fact they went for it. And Jackson cannot get away, and he'll go down. Came on Thibodeau. He beat the old line and recorded the sack. The competition comes up in so many different ways. And right now, this unit, their competition is who's going to get to the quarterback the most times. About five sacks last week. We just saw their first one of this game. Well, they're in some hot water now after that sack. It's second and 21. Now it's Jackson. And this throw a bit late as he couldn't reach back for it. And this drive is almost over before it began thanks to a great defensive effort. Sack on first down, followed by an incompletion. One more good rep, and they get off the field. And he is caught. And he is brought down, but not before reaching the 30. A real letdown defensively. That was third and a bundle. But they allow the conversion. There's no doubt in my mind that not many guys in this league have had the impact that he's had here in the first half of the season. He's been a big play guy from the word go and continues to be one with another one right there. So the big play has him all the way down to the 30 now for first and 10. Here's Jackson. And it's caught. It's Flowers. And down inside the 15 he goes. And between the last two plays, they've moved it over half the length of the football field. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. Here's Jackson to throw. Touchdown! Tylen Wallace with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Ravens are able to add on to that lead. In the second quarter, and already his second touchdown reception. Absolutely the definition of a difference maker here in this first half. Clearly one of his quarterback's favorite targets in this game, and I figure he's going to draw a little more attention and coverage moving forward. Extra point right down the middle, and the lead is up to eight. Five plays there on that drive, and it's capped off with a Ravens touchdown. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. The Saints again ready to go on offense. And last time they were stopped on fourth down. Had a drive stalled out. We'll see how they respond this go around. I'm eager to see what their mindset is. Because moving the ball, feeling good, and then that abrupt stop on fourth down. Do they go back to the bench and go, oh, boy, they've got something for us? Or do they go to the bench and say, we blew it ourselves. Let's get back out there and move the ball again. And is it different when you get stopped on fourth versus punt? Is that more motivation for the defense, a little more confidence? I think as a defense, you're so excited with a fourth down stop. Making them punt, that's your goal anyway. But a fourth down stop, that's almost a sign of disrespect that they went for it in the first place. And when you get that, you feel great about yourselves. 52 yards rushing for him in the ball game now on 14 carries. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. They'll look to throw. Firing quickly, but it's incomplete. That certainly appeared to be a play call where they were just trying to make second down, second and short. I think they thought the coverage was off a little bit more than it was. Nice job there pressing up on it and forcing the incompletion. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's right. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens' 38-yard line. A new set of downs after a strong pickup of 16 yards. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. 
Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. And he'll be brought down just outside of the 30. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. But following the play here, now we've got an injury. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. A third field goal of the first half, not what they're looking for as they come up on third down. They'll drop the throw. Setting up the screen, this is Gibbs. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. The Saints passing game in sync and moving the football. It's a first down. This has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against them a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there, and they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. Back to throw now on first down. Throw right side taken in by Bellinger. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and that'll make it second down. Again, he'll drop to throw. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. Back to throw again. A good decision in the end to pull it and run. Gets him nine yards in the first. Oh, Brandon, that's a game removed right there. Facing third down, steps up, calls his own number, and nearly makes the house call. If I'm the coach, I let him take another one right here. Give him a chance to be the first one to hit the end zone after that effort he just gave him. And he gets halfway there from the four to the two on a gain of two. But that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That was a nice play, but... And he takes it across and into the end zone. Touchdown, Saints. Jameer Gibbs, his fifth rushing touchdown now of the year. And the Saints have cut the lead back down to two. And just power football there down near the goal line. Give it to him. He's able to push his way across. Yeah, they went heavy there. Sometimes you have those big offensive linemen come in after report like they're eligible. But all they're doing is getting a good stance blocking and getting their runner across the goal line. A little surprising they wouldn't go for two, but this has happened good. And the lead is cut to one at 14-13. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This taken in at the goal line. And they can't bring him down. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. Brees Hall help leading out this offense for another series. We're in the second quarter. They've got the lead. The lead, though, not so much because of the ground game, because of their air attack, Charles. So what they're seeing so far is the possibility of things loosening up later in the ground game. Through the air first. Maybe they have to start respecting that even more as the game goes on. And then there will be running lanes to find later. Yeah, try to get him more involved here on this drive, maybe. From the 29, here's the second and four. Jackson. They'll set up the screen for Hall. And running with power here. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. That's good for a Raven first down, 15 yards there. And when you have success throwing the football, the old cliche becomes true. The playbook opens up wide, and these screen passes, they become even more difficult to stop. Throwing on first down, it's Jackson. That's into the hands of Flowers over the middle. And all the way in for a Ravens touchdown. Zay Flowers, 56 yards. 
yards. And the Ravens are able to widen their advantage. As a former DB, you might not like to see that, but from a wide receiver's perspective, those are the plays they dream of. Correct on both counts, all right? Because once he took off, I mean, let's face it, that should have been done in big sky country. Aren't any speed limits out there? And off he went. Glad I wasn't the one trying to chase him. Extra point splits the uprights, and the lead is up to eight. Scoring summary, three-play drive, and it's capped off by the Baltimore score. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much, as he's marked down officially at the 21. But Jameer Gibbs and the rest of the offense headed back out. They're behind in the first half here, CD, but it's not through any fault of their running back. He's had a strong start to this one. And you're right about that, partner, because watching him play, you would think that his team is in the lead. He has been a lot of fun in this contest. Now let's see if they can actually make something happen, put more points on the board behind his efforts. Yeah, I'm curious to see, Charles, if they can play complementary football and get that passing game going as well. That is caught by Dell. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. The Saints going to call the first of their timeouts as the clock stops here with 46 seconds remaining in the first half. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Now back to throw. A throw out wide going to be incomplete. And not a common sight, at least on this drive. A momentary setback, though, for this passing game that has been moving well this series. Good thing for them, though. Still two more downs to connect and try to pick up another first down. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. Well, every point certainly counts at this stage of the game, but after driving so far, you absolutely know they want to finish it with six instead of three. On third down, here's Gibbs. And they will rally and stop him short of the first down. They get him to the ground at the 26. Fourth down to give to Gibbs. And this doesn't end well at all as they stop him far behind the line to gain. And that makes him now 0 for 3 on fourth down attempts. A lot of people would say they're showing a lot of guts going for it this many times on fourth down. I think they'd have to start thinking with their head a little bit more than with their gut and their emotions because it's not working for them. They've got to figure out what's been going wrong. Zay Flowers and the Raven offense back onto the field. He's doing what he's capable of, having a solid game. Not, not the most amazing game. He's not over 100 yards, but a good game so far. And you just know that mentally... He feels like he's one catch away from turning it into a great game and starting on that road. And the defenders are well aware of that, too. They've got to figure out a way to not let that escalate. Keep him right in this zone here and call it a day because otherwise he can really decimate him. You better believe they are well aware of his playmaking ability. Second and ten. Now it's Jackson. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Ravens going to use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. And a throw on third down there, but he cannot connect. That is certainly one way to press through the quarterback when there's extra defenders on the field. Dime package, lots of speed, no space to fit in the football. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. Fielded just inside the 20. So a good punt there, but a nice return of 11 yards. And control of the football, switching hands with very little time remaining until the half. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And that will be incomplete. Four ticks left here on the clock. So another incompletion there. He's hitting on fewer than half his pass attempts in this one, and that is not a winning formula. Yeah, so let's make sure we give a little bit of credit to the defense here. They've given him a lot to think about, a lot of different looks, and he seems a little bit confused trying to complete passes. And now this throw incomplete, and that is how this first half will come to an end. So we have reached halftime here in what's an eight-point game.
as we send you on over to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Coach. All right, Brandon, we'll get back to you guys in a bit. But first, time for a trip around the league on this final weekend of September. We'll get started up at FedEx Field in our nation's capital, where it was the home team who were able to hold serve and get a victory in their stadium. The Washingtonians get back to 500 at 2-2 two and two with the victory. From there, we're off to check out another game. And things didn't work out so well as they fall to the visiting New England Patriots. Tua Tungavailoa, three touchdown passes as his guys stay unbeaten on the year. Lastly, we head to Southern California to check on the Rams at home at SoFi Stadium. As you can see, the score there in the second quarter. Trey Lance with a couple of touchdown passes. We were certainly treated to an entertaining first half. Both these teams with some high points and maybe a couple of low points as well. So it's going to be a question of who can be the most disciplined team going forward. Okay, Coach, appreciate it. A one-touchdown game here as we get set to resume play in the second half. The Ravens ready to receive it, and they've got the lead as well as we resume play in the second half. And we will not see a return to start the half as this will be a touchback. So here are the Ravens to take over on offense. They've won two straight, and they lead this one as well as they come up on first and ten. Second half starts with a run by Hall. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. 40 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. A good position to be in here, second and inches. They go play action now. Jackson. And incomplete on the deep ball. Not his best throw there, but where we sit right now in the third quarter, he's had a pretty good game throwing the football. He certainly has, and it's not exactly the point where we're doing four-minute offense yet, but they've got to think about, I'm not going to say milking the clock, but understanding clock management here on out. Fourth down now after a loss of two. I think it's pretty evident we can say what a difference a week makes. Last week, he ran pretty much wild, didn't he? Did pretty much what he wanted to do. But this one, they stopped him cold. That, to me, that's good scouting and even better execution. Yeah, and they stopped him behind the line right there. They obviously watched the tape a few times and made some adjustments. Fair catch called for in May, but now we'll have to see about the penalty. Personal foul, roughing the kicker, defense. Trailing here in the second half, went for the aggressive play, got a little too aggressive. You've got to know when to pull up, or if you're going to Automatic go for it, down. how to take your body across a punter's body and not into him. Not a good play at all. Straight ahead is Hall, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Now Jackson. And that's hauled in by St. Brown over the middle. And that'll be good for eight yards to the 45. Third and three. They'll run with Hall. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. Most of their damage has been done through the air. I mean, they've run the belt three times with passing touchdowns, but guess what? Ground game has not been neglected. Nice little burst right there. Throwing now, Jackson on first down. Open man left side as well as complete. And all the way in for a Ravens touchdown. Tyler Wallace with touchdown number three in the game and six on the year. And the Ravens go up by two touchdowns. Well, partner, he has carried them in this ball game, throwing the football, all four touchdowns through the air, and that's really helped them get this nice lead. And I know it's a team game, but right now, he is truly the focal point. Every touchdown his team has so far has been the result of his arm. How about him throwing it downfield, creating big plays? I don't know how you slow him down unless you can make him uncomfortable in the pocket. Point after, right down the middle. And the lead is up to 15 now. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. 
And no return here for Perry. That'll be a touchback. Now the attention turns to the Saints offense getting ready for their first possession of the second half. They make their second half debut here. Things are looking a little bit tougher now. You give up the points there, Charles, that touchdown drive on the other side. So now it's a two-score game here. Got to be careful. They certainly do, and I'm just wondering at halftime if those guys just looked into each other's eyes and realized what they've got to get done and come out a little bit more charged up because if they don't get some kind of points here, that next drive, that could make this a three-possession game. On second down, here's Gibbs. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. Now a pause, and there's an injured Raven in need of some assistance. Well, hopefully, obviously nothing serious here. Medical staff, though, going to take a peek, and we'll take a break. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. He'll drop to throw. Eluding the pressure right. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Give him seven on the tuck and run, and it'll get him a new set of downs. So from the 36 now, first and 10. And off the option, he'll try and run with it. And he gets this to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out. Beating him there with his legs, 21 yards, first down. Well, he is certainly dangerous when he spots a lane, and he keeps it himself there. It worked out well. And how about the moving parts on a play like this? You know you have to practice it over and over because it's almost like a ballet that has to be choreographed. But how about once he made the decision to go, he committed to it and went. Let's face it, most teams are going to defend the running back much more than the quarterback on that type of a play. And he's dropped right at the 40. Gain of three. Second and seven. Out of the gun, they'll give to Gibbs. And a very determined run there as he'll take this all the way down to the 27. Good effort. 82 yards for him on the ground now as he has been terrific here this afternoon. Going back to Gibbs on first down. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And it'll be second and very short. They'll set up to throw. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Gibbs. And the Saints are going to have a first and goal as the tackle is made at about the five. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. They'll run with Gibbs. And not a whole lot there. He does get a couple, taking it from the five down to the three. All of a sudden, those lanes that were there earlier in the drive dry up near the goal line. That's a good job defensively to diagnose the run and stop it for a very short pickup. And this one will wind up with him losing yardage. Back to the four-yard line. The tally there, minus two yards, brings up third down. He'll look to throw. And he's got him. It's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, New Orleans. Michael Mayer from four yards out. And the Saints are able to cut into that deficit. So a strong drive here to lead off this third quarter and gets them right back in this football game. And I think we can safely call that a statement drive because they had to be saying, we have put our best foot forward in the first half, but we certainly mean business now. Maybe a better term, a prove it drive. They proved it to themselves that they were ready to go. And a point after, good by Groupie. And this is back to an eight-point game. And this will not be returned. It's a touchback, and they'll begin at the 25. And the offense for the Ravens returns to the field. Pretty important third-quarter drive for them. Momentum has sort of shifted the other direction after that last touchdown as they nurse this small lead. On first and ten, it's Jackson. The short one there, caught by Likely. And this will leave him a yard short. 
Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Maybe a good spot to take a shot. Here, second and a yard from the 34. Jackson options out left. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. Nice pickup. Ten yards and a first down on the keeper. Well, partner, for a few years there, we thought this read option play was going to take over the whole NFL. It seemed like everyone was using it. But it has been scaled back considerably in the last few seasons, mainly because people worried about their quarterbacks getting hit. But when you call it at the right time and you use it properly, you see the type of gains you can get. A nice chunk of yardage there by the quarterback. From the 47 now, they work with a second and seven. Off the play fake. Here's Jackson. And that'll be caught. It's St. Brown. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's made at the Saints 35. The Ravens get a new set of downs. Give them 17 on that pickup. And, partner, they're locked in man coverage out left, and they end up running a crossing route. Rounded it a little bit more than a slant. And he's just going to angle himself towards the right side of the field, and that's very difficult for a defender to shadow him across all that ground. Jackson's throw caught there by Wallace. It'll go down as a gain of six, and that's going to bring up second down. Here's Jackson to throw. And that one off the mark behind him, incomplete. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. But you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. And darn right, they did something to disrupt that timing. That is caught. And he'll be out of bounds just inside the 25-yard line. Seven catches for him now in this last one. A first down. And Jackson throwing once more. And he's going to go down. They sack him back right around the 30. It'll be a loss of seven on the sack, and it brings up second. Now it's Jackson. That'll be caught. Wallace hauls it in. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. A good pick up there, 26 yards. Those are the kinds of plays right there that show you why he's the number three man in the NFL in terms of receiving yards. Also tells you there's a full combination of what he's got going in his game. You name it, from route running to catching the football, that's why he's able to produce those types of numbers. And they've got three tight ends here on first and goal to add some extra mass. And he will push his way forward down to about the three-yard line. Only a yard that time, second and goal. Jackson now. Got a man, it's caught for a Ravens touchdown. Sam Laporta from three yards out. And the Ravens will add on to their lead here in the final minute of the third. Extra point right down the middle. And the lead is up to 15 now. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. The lane opens here. He's past the 30. It's a foot race. And they are not going to catch him. He's in. Touchdown, Saints. It's been a back and forth game. A lot of points on the board. And that return right there kind of indicative of how this thing's gone. Yeah, you see both teams go at it. And as you just pointed out, both of them have found the end zone. But just like in boxing, you know the blow that hurts the most? The one you didn't see coming. And that often is the case when it comes in special teams. Groupie able to add the PAT. And this is back to an eight-point game. And no doubt one of the most, if not the most, exciting play we'll see in this game. The kick return all the way to the end zone for six points. So let's try this again. After the kick return TD, here's yet another kickoff. 
And we will not see an attempt to match that return touchdown as this will be a touchback and bring it out to the 25. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. Still enjoying the lead here in the third quarter despite their defense giving up that last touchdown. Now they'll see if they can get the equalizer here on this drive. That's all right. Side is complete here on the first play of the drive. And they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. A good pick up there of 20 yards. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now here live in New Orleans. Now Jackson on first down. It's the Ravens in control of the football. They've also got the lead as we get set for the fourth. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. On first and ten, it's home. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. And I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. So just three yards on the completion there. And they're going to have a third down. From the gun, it's Jackson. He's got his target. That's complete. And he will have a Ravens first down. They needed four. He doubled that. He wound up getting eight. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme. And you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards. And in for the Ravens touchdown. Tylen Wallace, 29 yards. And the Ravens are closing in on a third straight win as they widen the gap further here in the fourth quarter. And that's certainly an important touchdown there. It makes this a two-score game. But as we've seen, no lead is safe in this one with the way these two offenses have lit up the scoreboard. I would imagine that on their sidelines, they're both yelling at their defenses, hey, you want to get involved here? One big play from you, that could win the game for us. Extra point splits the uprights, and the lead is up to 15 now. So that drives six plays, 75 yards. And it's capped off with a Ravens touchdown. Here's the kick unit now for the Ravens as they'll send this one away. And no return here for Perry. That'll be a touchback. The Saints coming out now to take the field. And now last drive so successful with the ground game, ending in a touchdown. Do you stick with that formula? That would be the number one thing you would think of, but so many guys now would look at it and say, we've got them set up so well for play action. Now's the time to take a shot. Yeah. But, you know, there was a big-time coach in the state of Ohio who once said, <laughs> if you throw the ball, if you put it in the air, three things can happen, and two of them are bad. <laughs> Woody he would have kissed it on the ground. <laughs> yeah, he's got this to the 30 before being taken down. 126 yards rushing for him now as his sensational afternoon continues. Now that's a big time run. Lightning in a bottle, forget it. He exploded out of the bottle for that type of a pickup. So the big play has him all the way down to the 30 now for first and 10. They're going to look to throw. Throwing out right here, caught by Alabo. And they'll work it inside the 15-yard line before it's all said and done. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. They'll look to throw. Oh, that's into a sea of bodies, and it's intercepted. Kyle Hamilton picks it, and the Ravens are going to have it here at their own 9-yard line. 
But with the points that we've seen scored, neither defense has been at their best. But these guys have been a little bit better, Charles, and a nice interception there. Yeah, you're right about that, Brandon. Let's face it. It's not always how you start. It's how you finish, right? So maybe you have a rough game all the way along. But if you make a big play like that at the right time, it can make everything turn out just okay. First and ten, and they've got three tight ends out there. A jumbo package look. They'll start on the ground. Hall. And he works it across the 25 before being tackled. Successful start to the drive, 17 yards. It moves the sticks. Well, it is our business to analyze what we saw out there. And on that play, I saw a defense staying in base, not taking a chance, not blitzing in a situation where they absolutely need the football back. That's either a case of overthinking it or not thinking it through. If you do blitz, do you have to be careful about where you're coming from, or are you just coming from all angles? You have to be careful about where you're coming from, obviously. But at this stage, you have to take a few chances as well. Jackson now on second and ten. And check down complete to Hall. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. This offense so far on third down, they're hitting at 60%. Six out of ten thus far. This will be third and five. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Face man. Deep man. So it was already a gain on the completion, but tack on some more with that penalty. Absolutely, and no matter what Our angle you're making the tackle from, you can't grab the face mask, and that's just putting your defense on its heels just a little bit more. So now factoring in the face mask, here's first and ten. Hall ought to give up the middle. The 20! And all the way in for a Ravens touchdown! Brees Hall, 44 yards. And the Ravens have pretty well put it away here in the fourth quarter. And that run going to put him over 100 yards now for the ball game as well. Yeah, he's really had his way so far, and that's just more of the same right here. All he needs, just a little crease, and off he goes. Now the try here for the extra point. And the lead opens up now to 22 points. A drive there of just four plays. And it was capped off by a Brees Hall touchdown run. Perry, the return. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. Set to take over once again. Out comes the Saints offense. Remember, they have won three straight, but getting to four straight does not appear to be in the cards as they are in a big fourth-quarter hole. Try to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw, and he whips that one incomplete there. At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense, they're just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. Yeah, he'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. It's not a huge breakaway run, but if your starting running back finishes the game with averages of five or six yards per touch, you'll take that every single time. Dancing to his left. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. They'll drop to throw. He gets this out wide to Gibbs. And that's good for a gain of six. And it's second down. You got the big lead defensively willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens 35. And the Saints first down. First and 10 at the 35. They'll set up a throw. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Perry. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. It's another first down as they look his way again, this time 19 yards. First down. First and 10 at the 
They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Tries the left side and finds Alave. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. First down marker at the five. It's second and goal. Quick hitter here. It's complete. Just a gain of a yard, but it's going to set him up with a first and goal. On to give. Here's Gibbs. He'll get two out of that run, and it's going to bring up a second and goal. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. Now back to throw. That is caught by Alave. Touchdown, New Orleans. A three-yard touchdown pass. And the Saints have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. Well, they needed three scores to have any chance. There's the first of the three as they get into the end zone. Yeah, Brandon, I think that our guys at Next Gen Stats in charge of the win probability are probably saying your chances still aren't great. But now you still got more than three minutes to go. You got to focus on the task at hand, which is going to be getting the football back as quickly as possible. Tough there. Good pass. Hit the hands. He just couldn't bring it in. And every receiver's coach everywhere seeing that play. Focus, focus, focus. Watch it all the way in and tuck it away. And this one recovered by the hands team for the Ravens. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of a anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. Running left, it's Hall. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets them to second and four. And what do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time, and that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage, use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning. Delay of game, offense. That flag accepted, and it backs the offense up a little bit. Still second down. Coming up on the final two and a half minutes, and boy, has it been fun to watch this offense operate. Quite the display, and now they look to polish it off. Ball again on second down. Only a gain of a couple there. That leaves them needing about seven here on third down. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. On third down, Jackson. Man open. It's St. Brown. He's got it. So fresh out of the two-minute warning, and here's another timeout taken with 1.55 remaining. There's a fake on the jet sweep, and instead, a give to Hall up the middle. Now we'll get a quick timeout called by New Orleans, number two, as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. He's going to get it again, just looking to get forward and protect the ball. Now the Saints will use their third and final timeout and they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. So they're backed up to the three-yard line, second and goal. They'll look to run with Hall, and maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. So he'll take a knee here to wrap this one up, and he's going to want to keep that game ball. He was sensational. And with that kneel down at the end of the game, partner, 
they now get to three and one. This is a good football team we saw in this game. It is indeed getting to two games above 500, and I know early on while they said they wanted to win every game, they thought they would be solid with a three and one start, and here they are. Yeah, you break your schedule up almost into quarters every four games and assess three and one. Any team would take that. Here's the kick unit now for the Ravens as they'll send this one away. Now that final kickoff concludes the ball game, partner, and one side a really nice win in this one. They were good on offense and on defense. And I'm guessing in the other locker room, partner, the head coach is just telling his team, hey, we didn't play well enough to keep it close enough where that one possession down the stretch might have given us an opportunity to win the game. So for the Ravens, they're on a nice early roll as they move to 3-1 and one with a win here. And they'll have another road date next week with the Miami Dolphins. Meanwhile, for the Saints, they're going to fall to 3-1 and one as they suffer their first loss. And they'll try to turn it around next week as they head to Atlanta for a matchup with the Falcons. And for Charles Davis and our entire crew here at EA Sports, I'm Brandon Gordon saying so long, everybody.
It's the NFL on EA Sports. And we'll see the Buccaneers veteran linebacker who had a strong showing last week with an eight-tackle game. It's the Bucks and the Falcons, and it's all up next. On the Gulf Coast of Florida at Raymond James Stadium, just north of downtown Tampa. Today it's week four, and we've got what should be a great one here, as it'll be the Atlanta Falcons taking on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. With Charles Dick. Fall is in the air, and the NFL season is in full swing, and we're underway here in week four. This across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. So out come the Bucks now for their first drive. And they'll be led by their 5'11 quarterback and a mobile one at that from Temple. It's P.J. Walker. This is a guy who truly believed in himself coming out of Temple. He bounced on and off practice squads for three years without an opportunity. And his big break, it came in another league. The unofficial MVP of the revived XFL. Led his team to an undefeated record with 15 touchdowns, only four interceptions in a shortened season before the league folded. A little bit on the small side, but he showed in his journey outside the NFL, he has what it takes to lead a team. The numbers for him from a week ago, 18 carries, 62 yards. It's been a strong season for him thus far, sitting currently seventh in the NFL in rushing. He gives our offense really good flexibility because if he's gashing a defense, they can ride him to an early lead. But the defense sells out to stop it. That opens up their passing game. Third play of this opening drive as they're looking at a third and three. They'll keep it on the ground. McGee powers by at the 40. And he is going to have the Buccaneers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Third and short. So didn't need much, but got a little extra on the backside. Nice run. Shoot up the yardage, didn't he? To me, that was offensive line with leverage, good blocking angles, taking on a stacked defensive front. And once they chopped that little hole in the beginning, he took it and rambled. And just the third play from scrimmage, wanted to avoid the three and out and did just that. Now some movement before the snap. And we'll hear from our referee for the first time this afternoon. And maybe they were coming with a blitz that time, and it caused a jump. I think if we saw it, you know that they saw it. Might have been a little discussion down there. Bad guys coming. Pick them up. Pick them up. And someone jumped. Now a handoff up the middle. McGee. And he's going to have just a couple here with a marker on the field as well. Face man. Defense. Yeah, we saw that from up here, CD. A tug on the face mask, and the flag comes out. And we saw that last week they had some defensive miscues like that, and they told us that they had worked hard on it in practice and thought they had it all cleaned up. But obviously the message hasn't really sunk in. And Walker now to throw on first down. Got a man, and he hits him in stride. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and that'll bring up second down. And they go play action. Here's Walker. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. You talk about this Falcon defense. They're a unit that enters play way down, number 28 in the NFL right now against the run. Well, there wasn't anything wrong with them on that play, was there? Able to make a nice stop, held them to no gain. The key to their defense does exactly what the defense coordinator told you and I. They've got to be consistent. It goes as a gain of eight and moves the chains. Solid opening drive so far, Charles. They've moved this football into field goal range, but you know that they want to cap this off with six and not three. Absolutely. As one of the better coaches in the league always tells me, on offense, I want to throw body blows all game long and finish it with uppercuts. Well, here are the body blows right now. He's hoping in one uppercut will take care of the end of this drive. Now a second and ten. Now Walker. 
This will be caught at about the three. And all the way to the two-yard line there before crossing over out of bounds. That's good for 28 yards. A lot of precision being shown on this opening drive. They've been methodical. They've been crisp. And as a reward, they're going to be set up with an early first and goal. A terrific opening drive has them knocking on the door, first and goal. They'll bring a tight end in motion. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And they will stop him after a fairly minimal pickup. Give him two yards on that one, second and goal now. And they'll run again. And good work there defensively as they're able to keep him out of the end zone. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. So it's third and goal, and now the question, can this Falcon defense stand tall once more? And he holds it in for the Buccaneer touchdown. A great effort there. His second touchdown on the season. And the Buccaneers are on the board first here this afternoon. You know, as a head coach, you can't hide everything from your team. They know that people think that they're not supposed to be on the field with them. So they designed a heck of a game plan, didn't they? Nice pass, start, get out after them, and maybe let everyone know that they're going to compete. And get this home crowd behind them early as well. Yeah, that's a huge part of it, isn't it? Because if you get the home crowd involved, sometimes you can ride that wave, and that gives you a little added pep. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. So here come the Falcons now to get the football for the first time. And a glance here at the veteran who will be leading them. Now in his eighth year in the NFL. If you ask coaches at any level to design their ideal leader of a team, I think they're going to check every box with this guy. He's got the poise to handle responsibility. He stays calm under any kind of pressure. And he brings out the best of his teammates each and every week. The numbers for Pitts in that game a week ago. Eight catches, 102 yards, and a touchdown. Yeah, I think it's safe to say that he's off to a hot start here in this first month. And those are the kind of performances you expect to see going forward. Stroud slow, take it in by London. Four yards, the pickup, first down. A run for the first time with Bijan Robinson. And he'll be out of bounds up near the 45 at the 44. Nine yards is the pickup there, and they'll have a second and one. Clock rolling as we hit the midway point of this first quarter. They'll motion the tight end across the formation. On second down, another shot for Robinson. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. Four yards the pick up, first down. Robinson with another carry. Fighting throw. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. It's a gain of 11, and the Falcons pick up the first. Charles, they won last week despite him not running the ball well. They told us need to get him going. Runs like that help. And they talked to us about leaning on him because, as you noted, last week they didn't have to. Still won the ball game. They leaned on other people to give him the yardage that they needed. But they really want him to be that guy, and that's what they're doing early in this game. Eight yards on the pickup, but now they'll have some options on second and short. It's a game of eight. Brings up second. Four yards, the pickup, first down. The Falcons are one and two through the first three weeks of the season. They got off to the tough 0-2 start, but come off a very important first win of the season last time out. And it's tough when you find yourself in an early season crossroads, but that's exactly where they were. At 0-2, they were thinking, if we fall to 0-3, things can spin out of control. But now at 1-2, they shouldn't feel the need to press out there. They're now back in a good spot find a way to win some games and keep moving forward. So they gave up the early touchdown. This has been a pretty good response. Nice drive, taking it down first and goal. And I know all the cliches jump in, right? Don't get away from your game plan too early. Make sure you're settled down. Don't panic. But it's all true, isn't it? Because otherwise, you get out of what you plan to do during the game, and it's still early. 
don't get crazy because you gave one up. Just respond as you just noted. And hold on here because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury, and we'll be back in a moment. Robinson again, and he will take it in for a Falcon touchdown. B. John Robinson with his fourth rushing touchdown of the year, and the Falcons are able to match the opening drive touchdown against them with one of their own. Extra point by Koo, up and good, and we are tied at seven. Each team's had it, each team has scored. 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And he will be brought down here inside the 20. Good coverage as he's dropped at the 17. Tampa Bay, they're getting ready to set up shop here for their second drive. So both of these teams, Charles, coming off touchdowns now, but this offense... They just had to stand on the sideline, watch their opponent author a really impressive drive to reach the end zone. Yeah, and I think you're not telling yourself the truth if you don't think there's some upsmanship going on right now because they just had their touchdown answered by a drive of double-digit plays that also found the end zone. Now they want to do something even more impressive to answer that one. So they'll come up first in 10 now from the 33. They'll keep it on the ground. McGee, and he is going to lose yardage here. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Part of the thinking when you bring in extra tight ends, you're hoping that each of your guys gets those one-on-one -on -one blocks and creates a crease for your runner. You know what the converse is, though? You've got to win those one-on-one -on -one blocks. And when you don't, that's the result you end up with. On second down now, McGee. And he'll be tackled at about the 35. Four yards on the pickup there as they get it back to a more manageable third and seven. So seven yards from the first down here as they come up to the line of scrimmage. Oh, what a read on the outside as it's intercepted. So a first interception thrown for him there, and that really not the best decision either. Not at all, and that's something he did not do in their victory last week. No interceptions in that game, but this defense, they're able to take advantage of an early mistake. Now let's see if it got turned it into points. So for the second time in this one, we get set to see the Falcons' offense. And the momentum just continuing to build and build for them. They had the touchdown, their last drive to tie the game. Now their defense does its job, and Charles, all of a sudden, they've got a chance to capture the lead here. And we're seeing a really nice exhibition of what coaches love to call complimentary football. Offense gets a tie, defense does its job, gets the ball right back, and their teammates now have momentum. What a nice job they're doing, all doing it together. From the 42-yard line, here's second and three. Throwing now is Stroud. Oh, he'll want that one back. Incomplete. He doesn't drop too many in that department. Third down. And Stroud now to throw. He's got a man open. It's Chase Claypool. And he is going to have a Falcons first down as they convert on third and three with a nice gain of seven yards. On the bootleg, Stroud. Caught right side, Davis. Well, this defense for the Bucs, they were excellent a week ago in the win over Pittsburgh. And every defensive team that we talk to, they spend a lot of time talking about creating turnovers. And anytime you get two or more in a game, you've had a really good performance. They exceeded that number in a huge way. They got the football back four times in the win. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. These two teams all tied after one. Second quarter now, Falcon football, as they've got it with a first and ten. Again, it's Drowned. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. He'll get eight on the scramble there. It'll be second and a couple. Now Stroud. 
This will be caught just inside the 10. And the Falcons are going to be set up with a first and goal here as the tackle made at the 9. They'll run with Robinson. And they'll be driven back here, losing yardage to the 10-yard line. A loss of two there, second down. The short field shrinks even more with the type of bodies they brought in on that play. Those extra tight ends, they weren't able to secure their blocks, and that one ended up going backwards. Here's Stroud. Middle of the field, it's Robinson. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. Only able to pick up two, and that leads us to third and goal. Stroud to throw it. And probably the wise decision there. No one open. He just throws it away. And that keeps the field goal on the table as it's fourth down. And we'll see Young Way Koo now for the Falcons. From the left half, should be a fairly easy one here. Koo knocks this one through the post. And they take the lead here now at 10 to 7. So the turnover leads to points as they add three there. Yeah, what a sequence there and a nice one for them. They force the interception, put together a little drive, and then come away with three points. Nothing to it, partner. Just do it. And he will make it to the 20-yard line and no further. Now the Buccaneers offense gets ready to head back onto the field. Been a little bit of an interesting start. The first drive for him, Charles, they had the passing touchdown. The second drive, he threw the interception. So we'll see what this third drive of the ball game brings. Yeah, it's kind of the tiebreaker, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, that's a tough part for them and for him because, yeah, things went really well in that first one, not so well on the second one. He wants to get back to what he did to get this game going. That's the danger, Charles, of running plays like this for your wide receiver. They can hit big or they can be duds. Yeah, you're exactly right about that because if they're forced to try and go around defenders behind the line of scrimmage, sometimes you can give yardage in order to gain it. But in this case, they gave yardage and didn't get it back. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Play action now, Walker. And that one drops down, incomplete. Good coverage there, forced the ball free, and it's second down. To throw is Walker. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short. So it'll be third and less than a yard. Up the middle they go. McGee. And a pretty good burst there as he'll get this across midfield and down to the 46. 52 yards rushing for him now on what was his 10th carry of the ball game. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10 at the 46. Off the play fake, Walker. He finds his man complete. That's Wilkins. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. Oh, I like that play call there. After a run for good yards, you get a defense thinking they'll go back to the well. So that's a great time to call play action and give your receivers a little extra edge. And they complete the pass there for another first down. And a quick throw here. That's complete. That was play number seven on this drive, and it got him seven yards. From the 25, here's second down and three. The slot man in motion right. On second down, McGee tried to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. The Bucks on third down. They've been near perfect. Four for five to this point. Here it's third and three. Now Walker. That is caught. And he is going to have the Bucks first down by a couple of yards as they're able to get four there on third and two. Well, we always hear about the connections some quarterbacks have with certain receivers. I think this guy has a connection with just about everyone. Didn't mind throwing it in there against double coverage to him. Shows some confidence, supreme confidence. Big time confidence that he would make the play for him, and he did. A gain of three, second down. Brings up second and seven. 
Walker now. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And the Bucs are going to have a first and goal coming up as the tackle made at the three-yard line. They'll try to run this one in. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Buccaneers. A great play there. His first touchdown on the year. And the Bucs are able to move back in front. And this is where you can't help but think about our friend, the coach, the late John Madden. Because this was his kind of football right here. Line them up and let them get after it down in the trenches. And as a running back, you just need that one crease, one side of daylight. He finds it, and he barrels into the end zone. Touchdown, coach, just like you would draw it up. Point after, right down the middle. And the lead is now 14-10. to 10. That one in the books as a 12-play drive. And it ends with a three-yard scoring run. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. Atlanta now coming out on the field. Their drive last time, it stalled out. They were forced to take the short field goal. And the key phrase, you nailed it. Forced to, because you know coaches look at these short field goals as a last resort, right? To them, that's not how drives are supposed to end. You're supposed to put six on the board. That's a consolation prize. I go to the county fair. You don't get the big stuffed animal on that one, do you? No, you don't go top shelf. That's bottom shelf material. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. Stroud looking to throw. He'll find Gabriel Davis. A gain of eight there on the play. And that brings up third and a full 10 yards. Stroud. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. Great way to convert on third down there. 21 yards the play. Stroud now on first and ten. Completion here to Claypool. So given five yards there on the pitch and catch. And it'll be second down. Brings up second and five at the 50-yard line. And they'll go play action here with Stroud. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And it's picked up by the Buccaneers. And his guys are going to get the football at the 37-yard line. In their locker room, they've got a sign that says defense wins championships. And Charles, they pointed to that this week, said that has to be us looking good early. I like how you saw that because of the bold letters, right? You saw the emphasis that they place on that and what they believe in. And for them, it's every single snap. So it's not just a matter of getting to the quarterback and knocking the ball free. They're trying to read when that ball's going to come free. As soon as those hands separate to throw the ball, they want to be there and have a chance to knock it out. Now Walker, following the fumble recovery, he'll throw. And his throw here's incomplete. These two teams, they met up earlier in the year, back in week two. And it was the visiting Bucs who came away victorious, so they'll look to claim the season series with a win here in Tampa. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. A couple of quick incompletions, and now they're just one more away from getting off the field. They've got options now. Could they dial up a blitz here or just drop everyone into coverage to crowd the throwing lanes? It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. So eight yards on the completion there. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. They don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. Here we go on fourth down. And he is not going anywhere. They stop him for no gain. He needed two, but he doesn't come anywhere close. And the Falcons' defense stands tall. They'll get the football back. 
So he needed the short yard as Charles. He elected to try to bounce it outside of the outer third, unsuccessful. Sometimes those plays are stacked up by the defense and there's nowhere to go, so you have to bounce it outside. And some backs just get impatient. They want to go to where they think there's more open territory instead of going where the play was actually blocked. In any case, it didn't work here. Protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. He'll get 10 there all on his own, but it'll be second down. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. Options galore here, second and a few inches. Back to throw, here's Stroud. Short throw caught by Pitts. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. Stroud to the air on first and 10. And Davis has it over the middle. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. Stroud out of the gun here. That's going to be caught by Pitts. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. 39 yards there, a big one. And the offense is saying to itself right now, if only they were all this easy because he was wide open. And once he made the catch, plenty of room to work his way downfield. That was a breakdown on the defensive side of the ball, one that they want to fix immediately. Now a chance to make that big play really hurt. It's first and goal just outside the five. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. I'm really liking what I'm seeing from this defense because their coverage has been playing at a shutdown level so far. Even backed up late. They're forcing incompletions and fighting to keep them out of the end zone as the first half winds down. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. Good coverage yet again down here by the goal line. Everyone's blocking it, and he's forced to go around and try to come up with something on third down. Third and goal, Stroud. Buying time to his... And he'll take it into the end zone. Touchdown, Atlanta. C.J. Stroud. A six-yard touchdown run. And the Falcons will take the lead here in the final minute of the first half. They were looking to pass the ball there, but they forgot to account for the man with the football. Yeah, I can hear people right now saying, well, why don't you have a spy in your defense, someone who will dance with him and go where he goes. Well, oftentimes, if you utilize a spy, you've taken away someone in coverage as well. And oftentimes, the spy, not as athletic as the guy he's trying to keep up with, so he gets defeated anyway. And he turns third and goal into a touchdown. And good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. One more drive here for the Buccaneer offense in this first half. And the ball backed way up. So thinking with this amount of time on the clock, probably just sit on it and we'll see these two teams go to the lockers. Yeah, I don't think you want to overthink it in this situation. Either side of the ball, just go ahead and finish up the half and get on out and talk about it. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Now Walker. Throw left side complete. That's Wilkins. Now the Bucks going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 18 seconds to go in the first half. And he's got his man in stride complete. The Bucks going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Second down, here's Walker. And that's going to be incomplete. 12 seconds left. You've always been very good about checking my math. Am I correct? That's the first time that it's been incomplete when they've thrown it to him? Yes, he had caught every other ball coming his way. So they feel like they've got something really good going there, and they're going to continue to go there until the defense makes an adjustment and takes it away. Well, they finally made an adjustment there. We'll see if they can build on that stop. And Walker now to throw on first down. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he's got this down a yard or two shy of the 40 before he's out of bounds. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. And he missed it. It's no good. And instead of tying it up, they'll remain down by three. 
So we've hit halftime. Just a field goal separating these two teams at the break. As we send you a stone's throw away across I-4 to Orlando, there standing by is Jonathan Coachman, ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach? All right, Brandon, we'll get back to you guys in a bit. But first, time for a trip around the league on this final weekend of September. We'll get started up at FedEx Field in our nation's capital. And it's the visitors who are out in front in the second quarter. We'll stay in the NFC North as we head over to Minneapolis to check on the Vikings at home in U.S. Bank Stadium. And they were losers in that one to the visiting Arizona Cardinals. Kyler Murray, a strong performance there, over 300 yards passing with three touchdowns in the victory. Lastly, let's get to the Windy City, see what's happening with the Bears at home at Soldier Field. And they trail the visiting Lions in that one. The Lions still in a dogfight, but this would be a good victory for them if they could get it. It was a former Longhorn, Bijan Robinson, who was tough to stop in that first half. He wound up finding the end zone on a touchdown run to help give his guys the advantage here at the break. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. And the half will begin with a touchback. So we get set to start this third quarter. Here's the Falcons offense now. And they've got the lead. CD, what do you think the message was at halftime? I don't think the message was too drastic, I think, at the half, or that they need to change things too much. I do think the offensive line could play a little bit better. I think they'll try and help them out more. They'll probably keep a tight end in a few more times and maybe add a running back to the formation and pick up those pass rushers because they probably allowed a few too many sacks for comfort in the first half. Nowadays, this has become routine, hasn't it? That was a heck of a route there by the tight end. A great double move for a big-time catch downfield. On first down, here's Stroud. And that throw behind his man. He missed him. Incomplete. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. There's Robinson showing the flash. And now off to the races down the right side. Touchdown, Falcons. Bijan Robinson with his second touchdown of the game and fifth on the year. And the Falcons come right out of the locker room and score here in the opening minute of the third quarter. You get in a second and long situation down here in the red zone, I'd say most defensive coaches would think pass. Let's bring some pressure. So this is kind of a tendency breaker here to hit him with something on the ground, and he'll take it all the way into the end zone. Now Young Way Koo for the extra point. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. So a 75-yard scoring drive on just three plays. And it was Bijan Robinson who took it home with a touchdown run. And a nice job there on special teams to limit him to inside the 15 as he's dropped at the 14. Here comes the Buccaneers offense. They get their first reps of the second half. And their deficit a little wider than it was at halftime. Does that touchdown a minute ago change the thinking here at all? I think it does, at least a little bit, because now urgency has to start setting in. You can't go out there and go three and out and run the risk of falling behind substantially, but you have to do it without pressing, because pressing, that will lead you into bigger errors. And he gets this one just shy of the 35 to the 34. That one good for 20 on the catch and run. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Now a handoff up the middle. McGee. And good running there as he'll take this all the way up to midfield. 16 more on that one and another first down. So they go pass, now they go run, and two plays resulting in really nice pickups. Certainly sounds like a 50-50 deal, doesn't it? Sounds like great balance. Well, you know what all those coaches have told us over the years, Brandon, that balance is. It means doing what you want to when you want to. That play call is working very well for them right now. They'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. At their 48-yard line. 
Walker. Oh, he rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. And he's able to get it back here to the 43-yard line. Well, NFL quarterbacks have learned the hard way. You're not going to get rich thrown against this guy. He's definitely too good. And this is now his second interception of the ball game. And if I'm running the offense, I've got to tell my guys, you've got to go work on the other corner. Here are the Falcons as their offense heads back onto the field. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. Pardon, if you want more carries, I think we saw how you get them. Showed that he's got the fresh legs, and he picked up the first down on that run. Don't just ask for them. Show them that you're supposed to get the football. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Yeah, another good run there. He's been such a big part of their success here this afternoon. And that last carry, it puts him over 100 yards now for the day. The second down throw now from Stroud. Pass caught. It's Davis on the crossing route. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. 18 yards there, and it'll be a first and goal. Stroud to throw it. He's got his man, London, right side. Touchdown, Falcons! Drake London, a nine-yard touchdown grab. And his guy's now an extra point away from taking a three-score lead. I think it's easy to say mission accomplished on that drive. The goal was to increase the lead. They did exactly that. Two now for the point after. And that'll make this a three-score game as the lead moves to 17. So that drive, four plays. And it was finished off by a touchdown catch from Drake London. And he returns this to the 22. Getting set to go again as we look at the back, heading onto the field again. He's had a good performance, moved the ball effectively on the ground. Of course, he has the one touchdown. And when you're able to move it as effectively as you've described, that leads to finding a way into the end zone, and now he's just trying to do it for a second time. And, of course, with that comes additional yardage. Yeah, I'm looking for additional yardage, and again, that second score here in the third quarter. It's second and Walker now on second down. And that one's going to come up a little short. It's incomplete. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you've got to hit. He's wide open right there. Got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. And he'll be stopped at the 27-yard line, well short of the first down marker. Here comes the Buccaneers punter now. And surprisingly, this is the first punt of the game for either team. He punted five times in the win last week as this one's away. And a fair catch signaled for and taken successfully. So a change of possession here on the punt. And it will be Falcon football. Here comes the Atlanta offense now ready to take over here. Well, this offense, this team, they are rolling right now, Charles. They've scored on three straight possessions. You look at the scoreboard, and they pretty much right now got this thing on cruise control. Yeah, and this is that time of game where you and I have to be prepared, right? Isn't this kind of like the empty the bucket time where you have to go into your blowout material and make sure we have some different things? That's what we're staring at right now, the way this one is going. Throwing now is Stroud. And down he goes, a Buccaneer sack. They overload him that time on the safety blitz, and he winds up being dropped for a loss of seven. So a tough situation to overcome here. Third and 17. And Stroud now to throw. 
Oh, this will be incomplete. The rush gets home just as he was letting that go. That could have been worse. Instead, it's fourth down. The Falcons send out their punter. And the way this offense has moved the ball, he hasn't been needed till here in the third. And the win last week punted four times as this one's away. Call it 46 yards on the punt, just a single yard on the return as he was covered quickly. And the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. The Tampa offense ready to get their drive started. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to... There he goes, right side! And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. 104 yards rushing for him now as he's done it on 19 carries. Well, it's kind of fitting. A couple days ago when we met with him, I said... What is it about your running game that's so effective? He said, I like to tag myself as elusive. He was pretty elusive right there. And his teammates appreciate that because they know they don't have to hold their blocks for very long. As one of them told us, if I just breathe some bad breath on the guy in front of me, that's all I need to do, and he's gone. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Brings up second and nine. To throw is Walker. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Wilkins. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons' 29-yard line. Now a give right side. McGee. And a hard-working run here as he's got it inside the 20, down to the 17. That's a 12-yard gain now on back-to-back -back plays. They're making it look easy out there. Another first down. So, so far on this drive, let me do this little bit of math here. Four plays, three first downs. That's a pretty good recipe for success. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. And the Falcons are going to take over at their own two-yard line. And that gives him now three interceptions in the game. Well, someone's locked into what they're trying to get done in the passing game. When was the last time we had someone get three in a, in a contest? 2011, wasn't it? Kurt Coleman? Oh, yeah, that's right. Then with the Eagles? That's right. Then against the, with the Eagles, and I believe it's against Washington and Rex Grossman. That's correct. B. John Robinson and the Falcons back onto the field. He's already hit pay dirt twice. He's up over 100 yards. He is feeling good. And he's just zipping along today. Everything coming together for him. It's that type of a day that you see it back. Just kind of have a grin on his face every time his number is called. Because he doesn't feel like there are going to be any lost yardage plays. Nothing but big time positive runs. Making the sideline grin as well. So still backed up, but the situation not as dire now. First and 10 at the 14. A shotgun snap to Stroud. It's caught by Davis. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight. Second and two. So from the 22, here's second and two. At the 22-yard line. Out of the gun, they give to Robinson. And he'll only get a yard to bring up third and one. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped them. Mark that down for a win in the defense's column. And Robinson will not get there. Great defense at the point of attack and a stop him short of the first. Well, that was one of the few times they've been able to contain him thus far. He's over 100 yards for the game, but he lost a bit off his total on that carry. The Falcons send out their punter as he'll punt it away for the second time. A big kick that time, 52 yards. And they will take over first and 10. A look at the running back, the man out of the backfield as he gears up to go again. He's up over 100 yards, and he'll be looking to get in the end zone again. Has a tremendous nose for it, doesn't he? The ability to pile up yardage and find the end zone, that's the combination you want in your runner. That's yeah, a combination any coach wants, and we'll see if he can find that end zone once more. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. The second and ten now as we roll along in the third quarter from Tampa. To throw is Walker. And he comes back with one complete. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. That one covers 24 yards. It's a first down. 
Of course, the catch was nice, but how about what happened after? Able to stay on his feet and gain all that additional yardage. So many of these slot guys, I think, have running back in their background. On first down, McGee. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Second and 10 at their 49-yard line. Now Walker. And he couldn't get that one to his man. Short of him, it's low and incomplete. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Here's Walker. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the closed fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. So now on comes the field goal unit, and wow, this is no ordinary try here. So this will be spotted on the midfield logo. It's a 58-yard attempt. That also a career-long kick for the veteran, Charles. Yeah, how about what he just got done there? We always knew he had a big leg. But how about everything coming together perfectly on that one? Great leg swing, and bang that one through. Taken at the goal line. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. The Atlanta offense out there for their next drive. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? I mean, they score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, you think you can take the spirit away from another team, that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? Second down and four. Back now in Tampa. It's the Falcons. They've got the football. They've got the lead as we get set to start the fourth. No gain on the play that time, and they'll look to convert on what will be a third and four. No now Stroud. That's out wide here for Robinson. And he is going to have a Falcons first down. He needed five. He got it barely as it will officially go down as a gain of five yards. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Here's Stroud. Caught right side, Davis. It'll be a gain of five. And that will bring up second down. gain of five brings up second and five at the 37-yard line. Robinson on a give right side. And he's dropped right at the 40. Gain of three. He was close to flirting with that sideline, but able to stay in bounds like you know his coach wants him to do and keep that clock moving. Isn't it funny that we're watching this play when we had that discussion just yesterday about this? What do you do in this scenario? What do you, you know, what's your mindset? It appeared to me that he'd totally forgotten that he needed to stay in bounds, and then the last says, oh no, I better, I better get down. And he ended up doing the right thing. But at that point, maybe close to letting it slip away. The Falcons send out their punter as he'll come on to kick this one away. Averaging over 50 yards of punt so far as this one's away. This is taken at about the 14. Following the punt return here, there's someone shaken up. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. The Bucks' offense set to begin their next possession. Their defense was able to force the punt. That's the good news. But this is still a two-score game, and they need points on this drive and in a relatively quick manner. A.J. Terrell coming up to make the play. Now second and seven from the 23. Walker now. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And he'll have this past the 30 prior to going out of bounds. Ten yards there and a Buccaneer first down. Looking to throw. Walker. And he will find his man on the outside. 
It'll go as a gain of four, and it's second down. It's now second and six at the 37-yard line. From the shotgun, it's Walker. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. A lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap, and he locked in on his target, but he was covered quite well, and that one's incomplete. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. There's a quarterback who's learned his lesson. He's thrown a few interceptions so far. That time he said, I'm making sure nobody catches this one. Here comes the Buccaneers punter now as he'll kick it away for the second time. The call for a fair catch, and it's made at about the 23-yard line. 36 yards on the punt with no return, and the Falcons will be taking over first and 10. Stroud looking to throw. Quick slant, finding Claypool. And he's upended at the 33, following a good pickup of eight. They kept the receiver in the short field, but that let his quarterback get the ball quickly to him before either guy in double coverage could react. Play action. Here's Stroud. Got a man. It's London. Four yards the pickup. First down. Again, a four yards. First down, Falcons. Robinson up the middle. And a five-yard gain gets him to the 42. Good gain there on first down. and keeps him in a running situation, probably. They did everything right on that play, didn't they? They got the leverage up front. Good blocking. Nice hole for him. Ends up picking up nice yardage. Stays in bounds to keep the clock rolling. They are in charge of this scenario right now. They want to stay that way. And not in any rush offensively. They give him about four on the play, but he's marked short, so it'll be third and about the length of the football. Back to throw. Here's Stroud. That is caught. And he is going to have a Falcons first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 44-yard line. They'll run this one right with Robinson. Flashy little move, but unable to reach the 40. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Brings up second and nine. Stroud. Over the middle, complete. That's Robinson. Calling a gain of six on the play. And now we've got a third down and three. And it's third down. Robinson will try to pick it up. And I don't think he got there. No. He's short by maybe a foot. Maybe. Call it fourth and inches. This late in the game, Charles, I think you maybe seriously have to think about going for it. Especially where they are in terms of field position because this is almost like no man's land. Might hurt your punter because there might not be enough space. Maybe too far for your field goal kicker. I, I'm like the old rule. Possession is nine-tenths of the law. Possession is nine-tenths of winning the game. Go for it. Get the first down. Close it out. Koo knocks this one through the post. And that will extend their lead even further. So that almost certainly the final piece to this puzzle, a three-score lead. I don't think there's any coming back from there. But you know, normally I'd get on you for giving up on the game right here. But I do think you're right in this case. This late in the game, two scores is tough enough. Three? I'm with you. That seems out of the question. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. The Tampa Bay offense set to go again. Where we stand right now in the fourth quarter, this one pretty much out of reach. And Charles, I know they're going to be disappointed about several things with this ball game, but the self-inflicted wounds they've had several. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Picked up by Jesse Bates. And he takes this one back into the end zone. And the Falcon defense has a touchdown. So a fourth quarter pick six here, and that one might put this game out of reach, CD. I certainly agree with that, partner. And I know one thing, though. That team that just got the pick six, they're going to keep playing until this one's over. 
Better be careful. They're looking to get another one. Coup for the extra point. And he's been a busy man. Five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. And his guys will get the football right at the 20-yard line. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And that last pick six may have been the backbreaker as they now face a three-score deficit in the fourth quarter. They need points quickly. Oh, he dropped it. And that's pretty indicative of the way this one's gone. After the incompletion, here's second and ten from the 20. Now Walker. Another throw there off the mark, and obviously he's battled all of the interceptions. Things just haven't been true to form for him. I don't know. What do you think's going on out there, CD? That's a great question, and my suspicion is he's been coached really well to not show that he's having a problem. You know, they always tell you no matter what, you keep throwing the football with confidence. Well, we're not seeing a confident thrower right now. He's off balance, the passing game's off balance, and the defense is taking advantage. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter, let's see how this plays out. Going for the deep ball. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Bucs try it on fourth down to come up empty. And the Falcons will take control of the football in great field position. Well, at this stage of the game in the second half, down three scores, I guess they felt like they needed to push. And let's face it, with this deficit, if they give up another score here after they didn't get it, does it really matter? Right. It really doesn't. They had to go and try and make something happen if they had any chance of winning this game. They're going to snuff this play out behind the line. We have not seen that much today. Two yards, the loss, second and 12. At the 24-yard line. Again, it's Robinson. And some strong running. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. 147 yards rushing for him now with a couple of touchdown runs to boot. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So it's Falcon football as we welcome you back. They've got a third down now as they look for one more first down to help salt this one away. And he gets the first down yardage before he's brought down just outside the 10 at the 11. And now we'll get a stoppage here. There appears to be an injured Falcon on the field. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. Now a first and 10 at the 11. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And he'll fight his way down inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Hand off now to Robinson. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Officially no gain on the play, and they're left with a third and eight. They'll see about converting this third and eight. Operating from the gun, Stroud. This is caught, and he is out of bounds here. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And in a lot of ways, that catch is expected. Red zone presence, and that one was realized there. You've got to find your tight end in that situation. Well, they probably don't need to run a play here, but you wonder if they're going to be able to resist on first and goal. Robinson. Touchdown, Falcons! Everybody in the stadium knew what they were going to do right there, CD. Three tight ends on the field, all that extra bulk, and they run it in. And you saw where that one went, right? You run it over your best blocker. I can just see the head coach right now. I want to run this one over the big boy. And they got it done. Now Young Way Koo for the extra point. point 
And this one was over a while ago as they just add on to their big lead. So this drive spans seven plays. And it was Bijan Robinson who took it home with a touchdown run. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. Here comes the Tampa Bay offense now heading back out onto the field. Well, this game, it has had no shortage of offense. They've been able to put up a decent amount of points on this side, Charles. They just have not been able to keep pace with the other offense they're going against here. Yeah, that's a good way of pointing things out because now it's not a total loss because, as you said, they've scored some points, so there's some plays they can build on, moments where the game plan actually worked. But overall, though, they were just out personnel. They were going up against a team that's playing at an elite level. And as this defense walks off the field, they can do so with their heads held high. What a performance well, by, by the offense, too. I mean, really, Charles, just complete domination on both sides of the football here in this one. It certainly was, and I think both sides compete against each other all the time. You go to each other in practice, obviously your training camps, your offseason. But on game day, you both want to show your best. And I think that's what we saw from both the offense and the defense, a complete team victory. So for Atlanta, it'll be a 500 start as the win gets them back to 2-2. Two and two. And they will head back home next week. Meanwhile, for the Buccaneers, the defeat is their first of the year as they drop to 3-1. and one. And they'll look to get back on track next week as they travel to Denver to take on the Broncos. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Alongside Charles Davis, we thank our entire crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. This is the NFL on EA Sports.
It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And we've got the Chargers, speedy running back. He was unstoppable a week ago with four touchdowns. It's the Chargers and the Seahawks, and it's coming up next. With Mount Rainier in the distance, there are few cities finer on a clear afternoon than this one. And we have a picture-perfect day for football at Lumen Field in Seattle. Today, it's week four, and we've got what should be a great one here, as it'll be the L.A. Chargers taking on the Seattle Seahawks. With Charles Davis, as always, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, you talk about... Turn from just beyond the goal line. Turns this to the 22. So out come the Seahawks now for their first possession. And trotting out there, no introduction needed for this guy around the league. Now in his seventh season as a QB. And I thought it was a really nice performance last week by him. Three touchdown passes. I think that signifies ready, exactly ready. what he was getting done. He did have the one interception. But that's the ratio you say you're okay with, right? If you go three to one, you're going to be pretty happy over the course of the season. And let's face it, he'll never blame the receiver publicly. But behind closed doors, he probably told his agent, hey, what's the deal? I should have had a perfect game. From the 24 now, here's the second and eight. Back to throw. Tyler underneath, caught by Anderson, the tight end. And yeah, he was able to shed one tackle, but could not get away from there. So the completion good for just three. And it brings up third and five now. Operating from the gun, Tyler. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. So many times when we talk about coverage, we're just about a defender running with a receiver, but a big part of it is understanding where the football is, finding it. In this case, when it arrived, it wasn't a surprise, and he was able to bat it away. It's taken to the 26. That'll go as a 42-yard punt, but a net of 32. They had a 10-yard return, and it'll be Charger football here as they take over. So here come the Chargers as they get set for their first drive. And they'll be let out by their eighth-year quarterback. And I thought in last week's game, he found a way to win, like a good pitcher, without his best stuff. I mean, he did throw two interceptions, yeah. offset by one touchdown pass. Not the ratio, not the numbers you're really looking for as a QB. But finding a way to win, that's all that really matters. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. And second and ten, he'll look to throw again. He completes that to Garrett Wilson. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. 23 yards to pick up there. They'll look to throw now on first down. Going right back to Wilson. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. Another first down as they call his number again. He's got 15 yards here. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. Open man here is Gentry. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Back to back, nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. Again, he'll drop to throw. And this will be caught. 
in the end zone for a Chargers touchdown. A great effort there. His third touchdown now on the year. And the Chargers will jump on top with the game's first score here this afternoon. An ideal start for them, really. You force the punt, and then you go down and score. And you've got to see a fist pump on the sideline from the head coach, don't you? Because he's turning to his bench, and he's telling his team, this is how we prepare. Force the punt, go downfield and score. I told you guys, it's just like a boxer in the gym preparing for the fight. Now we get to turn it all loose. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Seattle's offense coming back onto the field, ready for their second drive. And they'll certainly be trying to do better than that first drive where they went three and out. And sometimes the first drive is just simply to settle nerves. You know what it's like at the start of a game with the emotion, guys a little bit jumpy. You do. Oh, you, you understand the same way. Just like <laughs> us calling one, right? Making sure we ease into the game, let it come to us. Well, you went and three now and out. have that opportunity. <laughs> uh, no, you didn't go three and out. I went three and out on that first drive. I'm trying to do better here. <laughs> They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets them up for third down. Well, this defense for the Chargers, they played really well in the win over the Raiders a week ago. And how'd you like to be the quarterback reviewing the game tape from last week and seeing this defense on the spot on almost every snap? If the ball was in the air, they took it away. If the ball was popped free, they picked it up. Five takeaways in last week's game. And here's Daniel wheeling on now to punt. 46 on his first kick. This one in that neighborhood as well. Fielded just inside the 20. That'll be a 44-yard punt. The return goes for eight. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. Now this offense and Garrett Wilson headed back out. There's a lot of talk in training camp about him getting off to a hot start this year, saying that they needed that. Well, he's done it through the first month. It kind of reminds me of one of those great musical groups where one person has their name out front, then they have the backups, right? <laughs> He's the guy out front because the backups, they're, they're doing what they're supposed to be doing, but we're going to the headliner each and every time. And that's not easily done because you know all the defenses are kicking towards him right now. That means he's fighting his way through traffic, finding ways to get open, even when he's not supposed to be. So from Seahawk territory now, it's first and 10 at the 46. Pollard gets it off the option. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. The rushing numbers for Pollard last week. The hat trick plus one. Four trips to the end zone with his legs. And partner, you know how all the guys do when they do that little symbol now about eating, right? Keep feeding me, feeding me. They just kept feeding him and feeding him. And next thing you know, he kept getting in the end zone. Now he dumps this off over the middle. And this time, not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. And it appears we have a charger shaken up on that last play. Well, the medical staff is going to come out here and take a look. And we will take a short break. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. First carry now for Isaiah Spiller. And he works his way free all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone. Give him 12 yards there. The Chargers have a first down. That was good, tough running right up the middle. And if the defense can't penetrate and make him slow his pace or change direction, that's often the end result. Now left side, a completion to his tight end. Only able to gain a couple there, and it'll be second down. Counting down toward the midway point in quarter one. And he's in for a Charger touchdown. A great play there. His first touchdown on the year. And the Chargers are off to a 13-0 first quarter lead. Another impressive drive. So they're two for two, two touchdowns. Charles, a great start to this ball game for them. And one of the words has really worked its way into our lexicon is stacking. They've stacked momentum each time out, and not only on offense. Between those touchdowns, defense held, forced a punt to get the ball back, and they played awfully well in this one. Both sides playing at optimum level. 
And he'll just sit on this one as their drive will start at the 25. And the ball now going back over to the Seattle Seahawks offense. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. Check white. Check pink. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And he'll get this up just shy of the 30. These are his numbers from last week's contest. 16 carries, 51 yards. Well, to no one's surprise, he gets an early rep right there, and they've been playing their best ball of the season as they built this winning streak. And that includes the ground game, where he's kept the offense productive and put them in position to win ball games. The question now is, can this defense that he's facing do what others have not and finally put a stop to this streak? And he'll be taken down, but not before they reach the 50. A gain there of 21 yards. You can almost hear the sigh of relief coming from their sideline and from their point on the field because this has been a tough start for them thus far. A much-needed first down there. They needed something good to happen. Plays like that will continue to help them dig out of this hole. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. Going right back to Smith and Jigba. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. From the 41, this is second and a yard. Off the bootleg, Tyler over the middle, and it's incomplete. When you talk about the defense for these Chargers, they played really well in the win over the Raiders a week ago. I don't know what the actual percentages are. I don't know the analytics on when you create five turnovers or takeaways in a game. But coaches have always told me, when you create a number that high, your chances of winning probably up over 98%. And what did we talk with them about prior to the game? Their ability to move the chains, pick up first downs. So far, 0 for 3 on third down. If that continues, they'll have little chance of winning this one. And he's getting a workout here in this first quarter as he gets it away. So here are the Chargers to take over. They're on a three-game winning streak and right now looking good in this one as well. They'll come out throwing here on first down. And the timing a bit off that time as that one falls to the ground. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. Now this one to his tight end out on the right side. And he maybe makes it back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. Here's third and ten. They'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. But the pressure there on third down, forcing the errant pass. Fourth down coming up. That could be the stop this defense needed to get them back on track. They've been pretty well dissected by the offense here in the first half. After that possession, now they know that they can compete with this offense. That'll be a 41-yard punt, just one yard on the return. And it'll be Seahawk football first and ten. Good starting field position here for the Seahawks as they come up first and 10 at their 35-yard line. Throwing to start the drive. Tyler. Smith and Jigba with the grab. That'll go for a gain of seven, and it'll be second down. It's a gain of seven. Brings up second and three. Up the middle they go. Knox. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. So you're down early. How do you get back in the game, maybe establish the run? I think they're trying to do that. Now I'm with you on that one, and what I like about the message is that there's no panic from the head coach. He's already told his offense coordinator, let's run the football, let's get things settled down a little bit and find our way back into this game. Second down and a yard. Second and a yard at the 43 yard line. Now a handoff up the middle. Knox. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. And they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. On first and ten, Tyler. That's going to be caught downfield by Anderson. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. 
The Seahawks moving pretty well through the air. Another first down. For a tight end, he's got good straight line speed. And on that route, he's often the guy that gets overlooked. Nice job there of finding him in stride for really good yardage. They'll run on first down. Knox, and he's taken down after a gain of three as they move it from the 22 to the 19. Here's second and seven. At the 19-yard line. Looking to throw. Tyler to the goal line, but it's incomplete. He didn't just deny a big throw there. He broke that one up in the red zone. An excellent play, one that may help save points on the board when this drive is over. On third down, Tyler. And that will be incomplete. The Charger D making things difficult, and it's fourth down. Well, anytime he reads man coverage, I don't think it's going to be the only time he'll try and hit that route to the outside in this game. He'll test the perimeter, but that time, they were up to the challenge. And this one is right through. And they get themselves on the board here at 14-3. to so the three points there in CD, that helps them inch a bit closer. Yeah, partner, when you're losing, any points you see go on the board in your favor, you're happy to take them. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And they'll get him down right around the 25, actually the 26 officially, so a net gain of one there. The Charger drive about to get going. These guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalposts, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. On second down, here's a keeper by the QB. And he is met at the line of scrimmage and he goes down right there. Call it no gain on the keeper and it's going to bring up a third down. Now he's loose down the middle of the field, inside the 10, and he gets it all the way down to the three. 79 yards rushing for him as he has been tough to stop here this first down. They needed less than a foot, and they got a lot more feet than that. Quite a run there on third and short. As the running back, you love when the defense is stacked near the line of scrimmage. You know it's going to be heavy slogging in the beginning, but if you break free, nothing but green grass ahead of you. Yep, smooth sailing and a big run because of it. After the big play, a chance to finish now on first and goal. They'll try to run this one in. They're able to get a couple here, but won't get across the plane as they stop him right around the one. And hold on here, because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. Second and goal from the one. Now they'll switch it up here and lift the throw. And this one is going to be off the mark. Too far out in front. Now we've got third and goal coming up. And can you imagine being in that one? You know you're looking at each other saying, we can't come away with just three points after this drive. Yeah, they've covered a lot of ground. They want more than that three. And that'll hurt the average a bit as this time they're able to get him behind the line. They lost a big chunk, six yards there, and it leads to fourth down. That was the kind of play that this defense needed because it has not been a good half for them on that side of the football. Maybe they can use that one to regroup a little bit and start to play a little bit better. And his kick is good. And they will stretch the lead now to 17-3. to So a nice kick there as they are able to add on to their lead. And that's exactly what you're looking to do. Maneuver yourself into range. That way, if your drive stalls out, you're able to get something out of it. And they do so right there. This fielded right at the goal line. And he'll get it up just past the 20 as his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just, I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put 
some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. They want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. On first down, Knox. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. Underneath, caught by Anderson, the tight end. So he'll be stopped here for no gain. And that'll leave him with a third and two. Off the play fake, Tyler. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. And the Chargers are going to get it back here just past the 35. Boy, Brandon, that's what I'd call an ill-advised pass right there on third down. I mean, you just need a yard or two to keep the drive going. Instead, he's trying to hit a home run. You've got to really like your chances if you're going to take a shot like that. Now the L.A. offense ready for this next possession. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> not one that I've ever met. Back to throw now on first down. And a completion to Wilson. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. The Chargers hit 3-0 and here in the month of September. And they're coming on a pretty good roll here. Winners of three straight. And let's remember the last week that this offense, they played about as well as they possibly could play. Touchdown after touchdown. They were absolutely unstoppable in that game. They'll be hard-pressed to do it again, repeat that type of performance. But boy, were they sensational just a week ago. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. He'll be dropped at the 25 after a gain of six. This second and four. They'll look to throw again. Over the middle, it's complete. He's exceeded his receiving yards from a week ago, and we're still in the first half. It's a first down. First down, Chargers. Now a handoff up the middle. It's Larson. And yeah, this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. It looks like a jumbo set with three tight ends here for first and goal. Now a handoff running through the middle. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. It'll be a pickup of four, and it brings up second and goal. And they'll turn to the power game to try to get in. And I think they stopped him again. They did at the one-yard line. This stadium once registered as the loudest roar ever recorded, and you can hear him now, third and goal. And he'll go backwards, losing yardage to the five. And a loss of three to bring up four. And that's what I'd like to see out of this defense, a little fire, a little toughness. It hasn't been the best first half for them, but they did do a nice job there, forcing a loss on that play. Cameron Bigger for the Chargers field goal. A 22-yard attempt. And his kick here is good. And that will extend their lead even further. Well, they already had the early lead, and they get the interception, Charles, and now they add three more with the field goal. Yeah, they're in control of how this game is playing out so far. You mentioned the early lead. Now they're expanding on it, getting plays on both sides of the ball. A winning recipe if they can keep this up. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Here come the Seahawks now, set to take over on offense. 
And we'll see if they can bounce back from that last drive in particular, if they can bounce back at the quarterback position, Charles, after throwing their first interception of the ball game. Yeah, some guys, you know they're going to want to try and get a big play right away and take control back. Others, they're going to look to hit a couple shorter passes and get a little momentum back that way. But for the defense, that goal's not changing a bit. They want another pick. You're exactly right about that. In fact, you've got to watch them a little bit because in coverage, they may cut down their gaps a little bit, maybe their splits a little bit in order to try and get to the ball even faster. Smith and Jigba in motion right. On third down, Knox. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Give him the third down conversion, five yards on the play. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Operating from the gun, Tyler. A throw left sideline falls incomplete. No receivers open, so who's forced to put that one into Puget Sound? That's a great job defensively blanketing those receivers, and ultimately, a smart idea by him just to get the ball out of there. He finds Smith and Jigba, and he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. On first down, Tyler. Now they go screen, it's complete. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. Now they got to get to the line quickly. Back to throw again. Left side, he finds Smith and Jigba. And he's brought to the ground with another first down at the Chargers' 32-yard line. Back to throw. Tyler hauled in by Anderson, left side. Now the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Two yards to go, second down. Looking to throw. Tyler. Under pressure and down he goes. They sack him back at the 36. Now the Seahawks going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Underneath, caught by Anderson, the tight end. And the Chargers going to signal for the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 40 seconds remaining in this first half. And his kick is indeed good, and that will close the gap down to 14. So the margin shrinks a bit as back-to-back -back drives here for him in with field goals. Yeah, we know no one's turning down three, especially in the first half, but you've got to finish these drives in the end zone. That's got to be a priority. Nice to have a reliable kicker, but outside of his agent, you know you'd rather him kick one-pointers instead of three-pointers. The Chargers going to take over now late in this first half. Already enjoying a two-score lead here late in the second quarter. Not a ton of time left. We'll see if they can work this at least into field goal range and try to get three to add on even more to their lead. Now the Chargers will use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. They'll break the huddle, come up on second and eight at the 27-yard line. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts as they'll stop him with 27 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. Now the Seahawks forced to use their third and final timeout. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. Fair catch called for and made at about the 32-yard line. And the Seahawks offense going to get one final possession in this first half. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. On the left side, it's complete. They'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. Throwing on first down, Tyler. And that's going to be too high. Out of bounds and incomplete. Sure, that pass was incomplete as they made an attempt to get a big one downfield. But that's okay because the second part of that is if you don't get the completion, at least you've told the defense you're trying to stretch them out a little bit, and they may have to change accordingly. 
Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Back to throw. Tyler. Oh, he had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. A final shot before break. Tyler. He's going to throw one up for the end zone. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. So we have come to halftime in what's already a two-touchdown game. As we'll send you eastward to Orlando, standing by with that EA Sports Halftime Report now is Jonathan Coachman. Take it away, Coach. All right, Brandon, we'll get back to you guys in a bit. But first, time for a trip around the league on this final weekend of September. We'll start our tour out in the City of Angels, Los Angeles. And it's the Packers who have the lead in that one. Trey Lance with a couple of touchdown passes. From there, let's head off and check out a second game. And things didn't work out so well as they fall to the visiting New England Patriots. Tua Tungavailoa, three touchdown passes as his guys stay unbeaten on the year. Lastly, let's get to the Windy City, see what's happening with the Bears at home at Soldier Field. And they were losers in that game as they fall to the visiting Detroit Lions. The Lions with an important win as they get their mark back to 2-2. Two the highlights are fairly one-sided to this point. It's a two-touchdown difference here at the break, but I wouldn't call this one over just yet. I think there could still be some fireworks yet to come. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. So the Chargers will start the second half with the lead and the football as we're underway in the third quarter. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. Out comes the Chargers as they'll go on offense now to start this third quarter. And they've got the lead, CD. What do you expect from them in this second half? Well, I like what they were able to do on the ground in the first half because they had a lot of success running the ball, and I certainly think we'll see more of that. But I keep an eye on that defense, and I think their coaches up in the box will do the exact same thing. If they start to see one or two guys start to creep towards the line of scrimmage, that'll be licensed to take some shots downfield. Boy, where would these guys be without his performance on the ground? That puts him over 100 yards now for the afternoon, and I tell you, he seems to be getting stronger as the day goes along. Running game working, they'll stick with it on first down. And he's got some space here. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. It's another first down on what will be a gain of 21 yards. First down, Chargers. Now an option play, and he'll keep it. And maybe the wrong read there as he's going to go down immediately. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. On play action, they'll throw. Wide open receiver complete. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. Call that a very strong gain of 24. Boy, how about the speed with which this offense can get down the field? It's taken them no time at all to get down here. And now they're set up with a first and goal. They'll try to run this one in. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Los Angeles. A great effort there. His second rushing touchdown on the year. And the Chargers take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. Extra point try now from Dicker. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21 points. Five plays there on that drive. And it ends with a three-yard scoring run. Oh, 
And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. Now we'll see what this Seahawks offense has in store with their first possession of the second half. Throwing to start the drive. Tyler underneath, caught by Anderson, the tight end. They'll wind up getting just a yard, and that'll make it second down. One yard gain brings up second and nine at the 22 yard line. Off play action. Tyler. And he's got his man on the out route. And he'll get this up to the 34 yard line. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. At the 34 yard line. Looking to throw. Tyler out right to Smith and Jigba. So the completion good for six yards. And that's going to bring up second down. It's a pick up of six. Brings up second and four at the 40 yard line. Back to throw. Tyler. And he's got his man out of the backfield. That's complete. They'll give him four yards there. And that's going to make it third down and less than a yard. Operating from the gun. Tyler, he's going to air one out. That's caught inside the 20. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. A gain of 39 that time. And that might be exactly what they needed to wake up this home crowd. They haven't given them much to cheer for so far and never underestimate the effect the home crowd with you can have on a game. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. Over the middle, finding Smith and Jigba. And the Seahawks are going to be set up with a first and goal on a pass play that moves them all the way down to the one. I think he has to be saying to himself, how did that not wind up a touchdown? Remember, he just did the tip of the ball across the plane. It's not going to get there, but they're going to be set up in great shape. With and he will score. Touchdown, Seattle. Punching it in from a yard away. And the Seahawks are able to make some inroads here to that deficit. Extra point right down the middle. And the lead will be cut down to 14. The kickoff team on the field now is they will send this one away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And the decision to come out of the end zone is going to cost him five yards as he's taken down right at the 20. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. He's been a good workhorse. I know we use the word workhorse a lot, but he's been a good workhorse for him in this one. No doubt about it, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's what you're looking for if you're a back because that means everything's come together for you. Big guys up front have created space. You've run through it. You've probably got some help even from the wide receivers who want to catch passes as opposed to block, but they're helping out too. Yeah, everyone's pitching in. He's had a good game. complete 22 yards there a first down and now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two score lead in the third quarter they almost become defensive with their offense just playing not to lose i think with this team you got to figure at this point this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off oh well, he's got a man wide open complete and he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. That's back-to-back -back plays of over 20 yards. They'll run on first down. Larson, and he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Second down and eight. Straight ahead, it's Spiller. Another two-yard gain there, but they'll need to do better this time. It's third and six. Well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight teams, but they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward. On third down, he'll drop to throw. And he completes it to Wilson. But he won't quite make it. 
He needed six. He got about five. Fourth down. That reception brings him up to the 700 plateau. He's at 700 career NFL catches now. And that club in baseball, a rather exclusive club, and one we talk about all the time in football, puts you in the top 50 all-time range. Not so bad either. So this offense able to convert on fourth, and now a fresh set of downs here, first and ten. This will be caught just inside the ten. And it appears we have a charger shaken up on that last play. Well, hopefully, obviously nothing serious here. Medical staff, though, going to take a peek, and we'll take a break. It's second and seven from the nine. Here's a give up the middle. And he'll work his way closer to the goal line as he's got five down to the three. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive. Because if you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense gets a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. And he's got it. And boy, he is very close to a first down. But from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. That pattern and scheme was well defensed on third down. He tried to just sprint from one side of the field to the other, and they got it to him quickly. But no chance at yards after the catch there, and they stopped him short. They're going to look to throw. And this is caught. He's got a touchdown, L.A. Garrett Wilson. A two-yard touchdown grab. And the Chargers' decision to go for it pays off with six points. That drive that really increased their cushion felt very military to me. Very precise, methodical, as one of the words you've taught me. And they just got it done. And slowly but surely now, starting to pull away a little bit. Things looking good for them here in the third quarter. Not only pulling away, but you mentioned that slowly but surely. You also drain clock, too, with yep. a drive like that. So you really give yourself an advantage. And taken down just past the 20 at about the 21-yard line. And it appears we have a charger shaken up on that last play. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury, and we'll be back in a moment. Coming to the line here to begin their next drive, the Seahawks offense. As this offense comes back out here, Charles, they're trailing in this ball game, And they've been on the sideline for a while. They did score their last time out, but they just had to watch that long, sustained drive. So we'll see if they can shake the rust off. Yeah, and that's always a, a question that you have when you have to come off the bench after having sat there for a long time. Are you ready to go? Are you loosened up? But even more so, are you mentally alert and ready to put your best product out there? And way up past the 35 before he's taken down. 50 yards rushing for him now as he's run it 11 times. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. So from Charger territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 43. Meanwhile, the throw here is complete. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Looking to throw. Tyler. Oh, he dropped it. And that's pretty indicative of the way this one's gone. We sit in quarter number three out in Seattle. A second and 10 now. They'll try the left side. Knox, and only able to get two here, stopped at the 30. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we've played three quarters. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. This offense so far on third down, not so hot. Two for nine to this point. This is third and eight. Operating from the gun, Tyler. Ball had his hands on it, couldn't bring it in. Pretty symptomatic of how this game's been going. 
Oh, nice defensive effort there, providing the hit as the ball got to the receiver, separates him from the catch, and normally he's a sure-handed target. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. And, oh, he took that in one-handed. What a grab. But no reason not to try it there, and they do indeed convert on fourth. Well, those are the types of plays they probably wish they had made more of in the first three quarters. And this deficit is going to be tough to overcome here in the fourth, but a nice first down and a pickup on that throw. Yeah, and this is where as coaches, you're looking for effort and execution, even though the scoreboard is going against you. You want to find out who's going to fight, who's going to scrap, who's going to keep their heads up and continue to play. Here's second and ten. They'll keep it on the ground. Knox, and not even back to the line of scrimmage this time as they're on him quickly once more. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. Backed up here, tough spot, needing 11 yards to pick up the first. To throw on third down, Tyler. He finds Smith and Jigba in the end zone. Phil Seahawk touchdown. From 13 yards out. And the Seahawks have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. So a little bit of a letdown there defensively. I mean, look, you're still two scores to the good, CD, but things may be a little more uncomfortable than they had hoped. Yeah, if you kept them out of the end zone there, this game's over. You've locked the door on them. Instead, it's still open a little bit, and they've got a puncher's chance. Extra point splits the uprights, and the lead will be cut down to 14. The kick unit for the Seahawks out there on the field, and we are ready to rock. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. And the Chargers coming out of the field now. Now, there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. He'll look to throw. Short pass caught by the tight end, Gentry. Now we're going to get a timeout here as it looks like there's a Seahawk injured on the play. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. From the 46, here's second and three. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. He finds Wilson. And now off to the races, down the right side. All the way in for a Charger touchdown. Garrett Wilson, his second touchdown of the game, his third on the year. And the Chargers are going to be moving to 4-0 and as they extend their lead. That's a pretty quick response to that last touchdown drive, and it seemed like they had maybe given up momentum. Uh, not so fast. No, not at all, because they end up pushing the lead up once again, and you're exactly right. Thought momentum might have been shifting. Instead, they grabbed old Mo, didn't let him get to the opposite sideline. Extra point up and good by Dicker. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21. The kick unit on here for the Chargers as they will send this one away. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. The Seahawks offense now, they get ready to head back onto the field. For this offense, Charles, remember the last time they were out here, marched it nearly the full length of the football field, and a lot of the attack went through the air, so now they're seeing if they can duplicate that performance. Okay, if I show my age a little bit, partner, because I can hear my high school coach, John Ford. I can hear his voice in my head. Laddie, when you put the ball in the air, three things can happen, and two of them are bad. But the way the game's being played now, this is just part of what they do. So I don't think they should change anything at all. They've been dominant. Keep throwing it around. And he gets it here to right around the 24 before he's out of bounds. Here is third down and four. Back to throw. Tyler. 
And this is going to be incomplete. He already came through for them on this drive. No surprise that they were hoping he could do it again. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. He's got his target. That's complete. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Again, he'll drop to throw. All right, rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. And the Chargers are going to take over once again at their own 25-yard line. So the ball changing hands on the interception, but meanwhile here, we do have an injury on the play. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. The drive starts with a give to Spiller. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. It'll be a gain of 10 to start the drive out by a few inches. That'll be a first down. Another example of this offense really having their way, Charles, and another big chunk play there on the ground. And when you look at the defense, they've got to do a much better job of wrapping up when they tackle. A lot of great opportunities continue to slip through their fingers, as do the runners. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. The They'll drop to throw. He finds his man complete. It's Curry. And it appears we have a charger shaken up on that last play. But the medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break. It'll be a nickel look here for the Seahawks on third down. Up the middle they go. It's Larson, and that's going to be good for a Chargers first down as he's got this up to the 45-yard line. And carries like that, that's how they're going to continue to salt this thing away here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, how about that? A new set of downs. Clock continues to move. No better way to close out a game than to tap those mastodons you have up front and say, guys, keep pounding them. Let's keep the ball, keep their offense on the sidelines, and let's close this one out. A full start backs him up five, first and 15. They run behind center with Spiller. And the play goes nowhere, losing yardage back near the 40 at the 39. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Back to throw. Six yards there off the scramble, but it'll still leave him with a third down. Well, it certainly appears to me that the defensive guys are starting to look a little bit tired while he still has some fresh legs. Not the biggest gain we've seen on a scramble, but still some positive yardage on a play that initially looked like a sure win for the defense. And they'll bring him down right at midfield, and he is well short of the first down. It's a six-yard gain, and it leaves him looking at a fourth down. And he continues to pile up the yardage. That puts him over a buck 50 now. And this defense has really had its problems trying to keep him contained. Here's J.K. Scott now. They'll boot it away from about his 35. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. Even though they were able to force the punt defensively, still a big hole to climb out of, especially at this late stage of the contest. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. And his throw is incomplete. That was a classic example of trying to run with the ball without securing the catch. He was thinking about those rack yards instead of making the catch first and then taking off. Now this one complete downfield on the left side. He's still on his feet. Seahawks get a bit closer. 
Charles, that was a heck of a play. It truly was because when he made that catch, he had to shake through some people, right? So that play, to me, a highlight film that should be accompanied by bass music, right? I mean, boom, 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 and he finds his way to the end zone. Terrific play. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. If they can score here, they have a chance to make this a three-possession game and all but put things to bed. They'll come out throwing here on first down. Throw right side, Wilson. It'll be a gain of just a yard at its second down. A gain of a yard brings up second and nine at the 25-yard line. They'll look to throw here. Throwing right, and that's complete. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 18 big yards on that one, and a charger first. And looking to put this game on ice in the fourth quarter, but still not afraid to throw it as they show there. You want to play the game with confidence, and they have a guy who's in control right now. Their trigger guy throwing it, they feel just as confident with him doing that as they would if they tried to run the ball and run the clock out. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. And hold on here, because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. An ideal spot here to get a first down and try to run some more clock. And this is second and less than a yard. He'll drop to throw. Caught. It's Wilson. He's been big. Two touchdowns earlier. Now he's got a first down here. It's a gain of six. First down, Chargers. Back to throw here. Open man here is Gentry. And he's going to get this inside the 30. The Chargers passing game rolling a bit here. They've got another first. On first down, Larson. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. I have to chuckle to myself a little bit, Brandon, because right now I could be in that huddle with that offensive line. I know exactly what they're saying. If you call a pass play here, we're going to call a timeout. Run the football. <laughs> We've got control of this thing. Get in behind us and let's go. Their time to shine. Second down and six now from the 26. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ballgame. Oh, good move. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. Now the Seahawks forced to use their third and final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. And he takes it in for a Charger touchdown. A nine-yard touchdown run. And the Chargers have pretty well put it away here in the fourth quarter. Sometimes you get a first and goal and you're back near the seven, eight, nine-yard line and you start thinking, Maybe we'll run it here on first down to get half of what we need so maybe we can have two or three shots at going for it from closer range. So this is a bonus right here. What a great run to work his way into the end zone. Extra point up and good by Dicker. And the lead now to three touchdowns in 21. The kick unit on here for the Chargers as they will send this one away. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. Well, probably not much that they can do at this point, CD. Down three scores late in the fourth quarter. This is going to be a little too much to overcome, you would think. Yeah, they'll go down swinging, but in the end, I think we saw the writing on the wall a while back because one team was clearly better than the other in this one. And while it didn't quite reach blowout status, I think we knew who was going to win this one well before we got to this stage. 
They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10 at their 36-yard line. Chargers able to get the pressure and bring him down. Now you've got to hustle your guys to the line and get them set. Off the play fake, Tyler. This throw incomplete, nearly picked off. And with his pedigree, he doesn't drop many of those. But third down coming up. Operating from the gun, Tyler. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he's brought to the ground with another first down at the Chargers 44-yard line. Looking to throw. Tyler. Got a man and he hits him in stride. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. And quickly they get to the line. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And he'll be taken down here, and that is how this one is going to come to an end. A higher scoring game, Charles, than we typically see in the National Football League, but fun to watch these offenses. They were really clicking. It seemed like everything that they dialed up worked. Yeah, it certainly was fun to watch from our perspective. How'd you like to be those defensive coaches, though? That wasn't a blast for them at all. And let's face it, they all game plan, they all scout, they all think they're prepared. But executing and stopping teams, that's another matter entirely. So for L.A., hey, they finish a perfect month of September as they move to 4-0 and on the new campaign. And they'll get another road date next week. Meanwhile, for Seattle, they'll drop down to 1-3. and And they'll get a chance to redeem themselves at home next week. So for our entire crew, alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.
It's the NFL on EA Sports. And the spotlight is on these Chiefs, leader at quarterback. He was terrific a week ago, well over 400 yards passing. It's the Chiefs and the Browns, and it's coming up next on Madden Football. From just off the shores of Lake Erie, EA Sports brings you coverage of the NFL from Cleveland Brown Stadium in downtown Cleveland, Ohio. Today it's week four and we've got the 
should be a great one here as it'll be the Kansas City Chiefs taking on the Cleveland Browns. With Charles Davis, as always, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, you talk about storylines in this one. I think it begins and ends with our two quarterbacks, certainly two of the best in the business. And nowadays, I don't think you can get by for long periods of time without a time. McLeod from his end zone. Regular down a couple yards shy of the 30. So here come the Chiefs for their opening drive. And a look at a guy, definitely got a little razzle-dazzle to him. Can do it with his arm or his legs. Their mobile QB. We saw something last week you don't see very often. Team loses, but the quarterback, the trigger man, Offensive player of the week in the AFC. That's pretty impressive. You rarely see that. Of course, don't worry, folks. He said the obligatory, I would have traded that for a victory any day of the week. Yeah, no doubt about it. But still, he must have played awfully well to win it when his team lost. Second and ten. He'll look to throw. Oh, he'll want that one back. Incomplete. He doesn't drop too many in that department. Third down. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. That was the first third down try of the game, and clearly something was off in the execution of that play. Good news, they've got a whole game left to clean that up and start clicking on those key third down throws. On is the punter Townsend as he gets this one away. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the Browns will take over first and ten. So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. They'll be led out by the number one overall pick back in 2020 from LSU. It's Joe Burrow. And it's funny how we always talk about how analytics are starting to creep into the game. One analytic that's been there for a long time. Teams that start 0-3 usually don't make the playoffs. So we know one quarterback today that's determined to end that slide right now. It's not impossible, but this is a must win for him and his team. He'll get five out of the scramble. It's second down. Burrow looking to pass. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. A pickup of about three yards as he's taken down at the 31. Third down and one. Hands it off out of the gun. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. They get five out of that one and it moves the chains. It wasn't a goal line situation, but how about the goal line formation on third and short? They went in and went heavy. No surprise that he was going to get the football. How about the power exhibited there? Yeah, that was just put a hat on a hat, drive forward. Nice job to pick it up. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. One-yard gain brings up second and nine. From the gun, he'll hand this off. And he'll muscle his way up to the 43 for a pickup of right around five. Third and four. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent gain. From the gun on third down is Burrow. And that is incomplete. As a corner, you have to be able to run with guys step for step downfield and man coverage and make up ground quickly in zone. You have to put yourself in position to make plays just like that one we saw there. Only two punts for him last week in the loss as he gets this one away. And no one there to stop it. Hits at the eight, but it carries all the way into the end zone for a touchback. Kansas City taking the field for their second drive. And the first drive, three and out. Second possession. See if they can get a little momentum. 
And oftentimes that first drive is just a feeling out process. You have some plays that you've got called and you want to see how defense reacts. It may not go terrific on the first one. Now they're ready to go. They'll kind of get a look at it, get a sense. Let's see if they open things up a little bit. See if they open things up. Let's see what the defense does here, too, after a good stop. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. And he's taken down. This will be a brown sack. Calling a loss of five. A good sack to bring up third down. It's all a task ahead of him here, needing a full 15 yards to move the chains. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And unable to connect. Incomplete. I give them credit. They took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. Looks like a second empty possession to start the game. It's certainly not the way you want to start when you come in off of a loss last week. Every team talks about starting fast. They're hoping on their next possession, it can be a delayed fast start and get them going. So a change of possession here on the punt. And they will take over first and ten. Second drive coming up here for Cleveland as they return to the field on offense. Defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and 10. A throw left side to start out. That's complete. We'll go down as a gain of six, and that'll bring up second down. They're passing here. Joe Burrow. And this throw incomplete. And the defender all over at that time, and it's going to lead to third down. Now Burrow. I oh, had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. And this passing game's whole offense really didn't show up in the loss last week, and it hasn't started all that great here either. Yeah, and they can't let that incompletion become an uh-oh moment. Like, oh boy, here we go again, just like last week. Each game is its own entity, treated as such. 37 yards on the punt with no return, and it's Chiefs football, first and 10. And now this offense comes back out onto the field. And partner, I know so far, and we're still in the first half, but you love this game as a defensive guy, zero to zero. We'll see if the offense can get going on this drive. Well, you know how they talk about music to your ears? How about what it does for your eyes when you watch something like this, right, where these teams are locked in and going at it, no points going up on the scoreboard. I'm loving it. You're exactly right. Well, switch over, though, to an offensive mindset for a moment. What do they need to do here to get on track and get some points? Well, I think a couple of ways. Number one, you pull out something that maybe they haven't seen before. Coach is always talking about unscouted looks. Maybe you give them something that they haven't seen on tape, and now you shot them that way. The second... Run your basic playbook, but run it so well that you give your skill position guys a chance to make big plays individually. A big hitter there, a first down gain of 26 yards. Brandon, what were they thinking on defense there? That looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. Just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you ought to have a few men in the box there. So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now at the 48-yard line. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. And incomplete, a drop there in the middle third of the field. That'll bring up second down. They'll set up to throw. And they're going to get him. He's taken down for a sack. Back at the 47-yard line. It'll go as a loss of about six. And now it brings up third. They'll look to throw. Into the hands of the tight end, Dalton Kincaid. Now he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. They get 15, but they still need it a little bit more. Fourth down. They'll run for it with Pacheco. And the broken tackle helps lead to a first down gain. Well, we kind of looked at each other as they decided to go for it, but in the end, great execution, a six-yard gain, and it all works out. So now following the roll of the dice, they've got a first and 10 inside the 35. 
Now this one to his tight end out on the right side. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. The Chiefs have got the passing game rolling a bit. And another first down. And that was good protection there. No, that was great protection there because it allowed him to lock in on his receiver. Although I think he was looking for his tight end on the corner route all the way. Nice connection there for a really nice game. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. It certainly looked like someone was very confident in his ability to fit that one in. I would say he was overconfident because there wasn't a whole lot of separation there. Had that one covered pretty well downfield and knocked it away. He'll drop this off to Pacheco. And a nice job to break free of one tackle, but it slowed his momentum somewhat, and he's taken down right after. Now a third and six. Back to throw again. And they'll set up the screen to Pacheco. And he's going to come up well shy of the first here as the tackle's made right around the 12. They'll get only a yard out of that, and it'll bring up fourth down. Now Harrison Butker for the field goal try from the right hash, and this one just a chippy. Butker's kick here is good, and the Chiefs are out to a 3-0 lead. So that kick gives them their first points of the game, CD, and it comes on the third drive, but hopefully for them that's a spark that gets that offense going. Yeah, and I would say if you're the offensive play caller, as you look at your sheet, you're trying to find that part on there that unlocks bigger points. They struggled with a few drives so far. Finally got three out of it. How do you find the end zone? That's what he's searching for now. On first and ten, Joe Burrow. Well, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Trent McDuffie with a pick. And they take possession of the football and have it at the 36-yard line. And this Charles definitely not what they were wanting to see. Remember, he threw three interceptions in the loss last week, and now he gives the ball away again here in the very first quarter. And you have to think that this was drilled into him all week, too, by his teammates, by his coaching staff. They've told him all week long, we've got to protect the football. They probably crossed that fine line with giving him the right advice and saying it too much, and it turned out that it got into his head a little bit. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And his throw is going to be incomplete. We look at this Browns defense. They find themselves just a couple of spots outside of the top 10 defending the pass, number 12 in the league. So I'm prepping for this game. I kept asking myself the question, what's keeping this group from being top 10 in the league against the pass? And too many mistakes, especially little mistakes. If those add up into big mistakes, big mistakes add up into points against you. That's complete, and he will have a Chiefs first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up, but I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up, they know why they... Touchdown! Dalton Kincaid, his first touchdown on the year. And they are able to add on to their advantage. We're still in the first quarter, but it's apparent they're going to have to come up with a different defensive game plan for him because right now he's kind of having his way against that defense and has added a touchdown to the list. How do you slow him down? They're going to have to mix up some coverages, maybe change who's guarding him. Harrison Butker is on for the extra point. He's got it, and now it's a 10-0 lead here in the opening quarter. Just a four-play drive that time, and it's capped off with a Kansas City touchdown. So an early 10-0 lead for them now as they kick it away. And this taken in at the goal line. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And for this offense, Charles, you got to think kind of crucial here to put something together on this drive because remember last time out, they threw the interception on the very first play. And you can't afford to let this defense keep building any more momentum. They're playing awfully well, and they're awfully confident right now. To me, it's time to attack and take some of that momentum back 
but make sure you're selective in doing so. Understand where you want to throw the football and make sure it's open before the ball leaves your hands. Well, they were coming out of the 4-3 defensively. Pressure coming off that right side from the DM. And that's the blind side of most quarterbacks. If you're right-handed, that's the side you don't see quite as well. And that's why you rely on your left tackle, maybe your highest-paid offensive lineman, to take care of you. In this situation, that didn't happen. Out of the gun, it's Burrow. Looking left side, and it's complete. And he'll be taken down, but they've got this one up to the 35-yard line. A gain there of 21 yards. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Here's Burrow. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. So they'll get nothing out of that play, and it'll be second down. Brings up second and 10. At the, yard line. the tight end in motion right. On second down now, Rainey. And this defense not giving him anything there. Maybe a yard up to the 36. Third and eight. A one-yard pickup brings up third and eight. Burrow will throw. And that incomplete nearly intercepted. And remember, he had his hands on one earlier, had one pick. It could have been his second, but instead, it's fourth down. The Browns send out their punter now as he's on here to punt it away. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And a fair catch signaled for and taken at about the 18-yard line. 10-0 the score after one on EA Sports. The Chiefs with the football as we start the second quarter. The KC offense out of the huddle, ready for their next drive. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show them. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go around. He'll try again with the arm here on second down. Throw to the right, held in by Addison. And he is going to lose yardage here. Two yards the loss, and now third and 12. Made the quick throw there outside the numbers, and you can feel the thought process. They just wanted to get in his hands and let him make a play. But how about the job they did defensively to keep him bottled up? Instead, they tackle him for a loss. Out of the gun now on third down. And he is caught and past the 40 before he's out of bounds. Excellent play there on third down. Give him 25 yards. But things are definitely going right for them here in the first half. Pick a down, any down, even third down, no problem. They get a connection there and pick up a fresh set of downs, continuing to move the ball. Again, he'll drop to throw. And his throw here is incomplete. The Chiefs are one and two for the first three weeks of the season. And they fell in the opener, got back on the beam with a win in week two, but stumbled again last week to fall under 500. And despite that stumble, I don't think anyone's too concerned because they've made mistakes that they believe are correctable. And this is a team still getting to know each other. I'm not that concerned, and neither are they. Complete. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns' 34-yard line. And now timeout is whistled as it appears there's a Brown shaken up on the play. Well, hopefully, obviously nothing serious here. Medical staff, though, are going to take a peek, and we'll take a break. They'll look to throw again. Well, that one caught up by Rice. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. Add the gain here to the previous play, and it's better than 40 yards total. That catch for his career is number 731, and that's the number that Calvin Johnson ended with when he stopped his career in 2016. Yeah, what could have been for him. So maybe now what we'll see is someone else continue to elevate their game and put this number well in his rearview mirror. I think 800, not out of line here. 
looks like he'll be just a yard shy of the five here as he's out at the six. First down marker at the five. It's second and goal. They'll let the QB keep it here off the option. And the Chiefs are going to be set up with a first and goal. He couldn't quite reach the chalk, but they'll have it at the one-yard line. And they'll let the fullback try and take him home. And he is in. Touchdown, Kansas City. It's the fullback. His first rushing touchdown on the year. And his guy's now an extra point away from taking a three-score lead. And that's why you have the fullback, Charles. Couldn't get it in the play before with a smaller guy. Turned to a little more power. They score it. And now it has to warm the hearts of a lot of old-school football fans. They love when they get to see a little bit of power football. Extra point by Butker is on target. And yeah, that makes our score 17-0. Now after the touchdown, here's Butker on to kick it away. This taken in right around the goal line. And good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. The Browns set and ready to go on offense. And we don't want to call this desperation time, especially in the second quarter, but you're you don't down. don't want to. No, but oh, let me finish. Okay, my bad. You're down three scores already. You've done nothing offensively, nothing on the scoreboard. That's that's not a good combination. I think you just, you called, a I think you just called a desperation time. I think <laughs> yeah. you did. But let's face it, you mentioned this to me in a break earlier in the game. The energy level hasn't been there right from the start. We've noticed that. They've got to find a way to get on their toes and start punching instead of retreating, to use a boxing analogy. But now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. I would say it'd probably be a good idea for him to reintroduce himself to his receivers at the half because they're definitely on different wavelengths. But I also don't advocate waiting that long. Next series, before you get out there. Hey, let's get together, guys. Let's get this thing moving. And he is going to lose yardage here. That's going to go down as a loss of five, and it brings up third down. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness. He's the whole package, and that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. Now Joe Burrow on third and long. And that is incomplete. The passing game not in sync here early. And now it's fourth down. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. Fair catch called for and made at the 16 or maybe the 17-yard line. The ball back to the Chiefs and Isaiah Pacheco. We're in the second quarter. They've got the lead. The lead, though, not so much because of the ground game, because of their air attack, Charles. So what they're seeing so far is the possibility of things loosening up later in the ground game. Through the air first, maybe they have to start respecting that even more as the game goes on, and then there will be running lanes to find later. Yeah, try to get him more involved here on this drive, maybe. Now a second and ten. Looking to throw. He'll check this one down to Pacheco. And he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. The catch and run, good for 18 and a first down. So many times in my career, I've heard coaches talk about completions are one thing. But as long as we're there at the catch and we get guys on the ground, we can live with that. But if you're going to give up 10, 12, 15 yards after the catch, then your defense is going to be in a lot of trouble. They'll look to throw here on first down. That is caught. Kincaid with it. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. A good pickup there, 21 yards. So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now at the 43. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And this one's incomplete. Well, they've been back on their heels a little bit here on this drive, but a chance to exhale just a little bit there with incompletion on first down. Now they have to gear up, try and get two more stops, and escape this drive. 
Now this throw caught left side. And all the way in for a Kansas City touchdown. Jamison Williams. He has career touchdown number 78, tying in with both Eddie George and Frank Gifford on the all-time list. And the Chiefs continue to pull away here in this first half. Butker now to add the extra point. And the lead is now 24. So that drive spanned five plays. And it was Jamison Williams wrapping things up with a touchdown. And this will not be brought out. It's a touchback. Heading out as a Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. Well, CD, you kind of feel like they're in a bit of a danger zone right here because now you're down three scores. And I know we're in the first half, but the way this offense hasn't been able to generate anything, you feel like they probably need to get something going on this drive, right? Yeah, and sometimes I overuse that this is an important possession, but I think this has to be the possession where they come up with an answer because only a few teams in league history have ever come back from a four-score deficit. And if they don't score here, that's what they could be facing the next time they get the ball. On second down, Rainey. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook. Go play action. Toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down. Keep the sticks moving. Burrow completed to Hyatt. That's good. The completion there for seven yards. And that will bring up second down. A seven-yard pickup brings up second and three at the 43-yard line. Now a handoff up the middle. Rainey, and three yards there, takes him to the 45. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. His first catch there, good for 10 yards and a first down. First down at the 45 yard line. Now a give right side. Rainey, and he still has yet to get on track in this first half as they're going to stop him behind the line. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. Looking for his running back, and he's got him. The result, only four yards there on the play. And that's going to set up a tough third and nine. From the shotgun, it's Burrow. Oh, everything falling apart now. Another one intercepted. Picked by Antoine Winfield Jr. And the Chiefs are going to take over at their own 30-yard line. Partner, I think this one won't arrive very simply because he overestimated his arm strength and his ability to fit it anywhere he wants to. A lot of quarterbacks do that and often pay the price. So here are the Chiefs to take over. They fell in their ball game last week. That was a loss to the Saints, but they're on top here as they begin this drive. They'll come out throwing here on first down. His throw incomplete. Oh, I like the calmness of how he played the ball here. No panic in his eyes as that throw arrived. Tracked it from the moment it left the quarterback's hand. And that's just where he needed to be to knock it away. He's got it to Williams. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. That'll put him over 100 yards receiving now here in this first half of action. First down, Kansas City. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. A short throw pulled in by Kincaid. So the completion good for seven there. And it's second down. They don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. A run by Pacheco on second down. And he stopped immediately there. Call it no gain that time as it's going to leave him with a third and about three to go. Second quarter action with 1.59 remaining. 
Here's third and three. They'll drop to throw. He has his target. It's Addison. And he will have a Chiefs first down by a couple of yards as they're able to convert here on third and three. And the first down, Chiefs. On first down, he'll drop to throw. Flushed out right. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Multiple players getting home there, and it's a loss of two on the sack. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? That's three sacks now, and this team came into the game in the bottom five in the league in sacks. Yeah, this What's is going not, on? It's not been their bread and butter. I don't know. Is a blind squirrel finding a nut, or is this something they can build on? Well, they found some momentum. They found a crack in that offensive line, and they're putting it to good use. Personal foul, roughing the passer, defense. So now a fresh set of downs, first and ten after roughing the passer. They're going to look to throw. His pass caught at the four. And the Chiefs are going to be set up with a first and goal on a pass play that moves them all the way down to the one. Just picking up yardage in bunches here. These last few plays, they have moved right down the field. And just like that, they're going to be set up with a first and goal. A chance to really cap off a big first half here as they come up on first and goal. Pacheco he is not going to get in here as they push him back to the two-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft, and able to... And he's got it. Touchdown, Chiefs. Jordan Addison, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Chiefs will extend their lead in the final minute of the half. There was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. Butker on for the PAT. And the route is on here in this first half. That time, a nine-play drive. And Jordan Addison capped it off with a touchdown catch. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. And the Browns going to go on offense one final time in this first half. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively, they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. So we've reached halftime here in what is quickly turning into quite a rout. As we send you down to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, we'll get back to you guys in a bit. But first, time for a trip around the league on this final weekend of September. We'll start with a good one in Southern California. Green Bay in town to take on Los Angeles in the NFC. And that one tied 14 apiece in the second quarter. Next, we head down to Houston to check on the Texans at home at NRG Stadium. And things didn't work out so well as they fall to the visiting New England Patriots. Tua Tungavailoa, three touchdown passes as his guys stay unbeaten on the year. Lastly, let's get to the Windy City, see what's happening with the Bears at home at Soldier Field. And they were losers in that game as they fall to the visiting Detroit Lions. The Lions get back to 500 at 2-2 two and two with the victory. The highlights from the first half, all one-sided. This one got out of hand early, and now you have to wonder how these teams will approach this second half, because this one's already close to being in the bag if it's not already. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Browns going to see the football first, but they trail here as we resume play on EA Sports. 
And he will make it to the 20 yard line and no further. Here's the Browns offense now getting set to start off this third quarter. We'll see, Charles, if they had a chance to hit the reset button at halftime. They have not scored. They're facing this big deficit. And if they're going to come back, it's going to have to start right now. Yeah, and for them, it's not dwelling in the negative because, yes, they were totally ineffective in the first half. But we've seen many games that have flipped around in the second half. It all starts with this drive right here. They get something good going, put some points on the board, they begin to have hope. Second and 10 now, Burrow. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. Well, I think completions on first and second down. It certainly seems like a reflection of what we've seen so far in this game. The defense, quicker to the punch so far. Let's see if they can get something going here on third down. Dancing to his left. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Burrow on his toes that time as they get the first down. First and 10 at the 36 yard line. Now a give right side. Rainey. And a five yard gain gets him to the 42. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. Now Burrow. And he drops it incomplete. And their struggles continue here. When you run in the slant, timing is everything. And against that man coverage, there was no space available and incompletion as a result. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he'll be brought down with a first down as the tackle's made at the Chiefs' 44-yard line. Now it's Burrow. And he will find his man on the outside. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. Second down and four. Brings up second and four. They'll try the left side. Rainey. And he'll take this one down to the 36. Well, that ground game just continues to struggle to really get any momentum in this ball game, Charles. And I mean, you're at the point here, third quarter, down four scores, probably going to have to put it in the air. Oh, no question about it. So that's your only chance, your only opportunity. But think of the pressure you just put on your offensive line because if you're a pass rusher, you're not even thinking about them running the football. All you're doing is getting into that sprinter stance and going after the quarterback. They'll fake the jet sweep and go play action with Burrow. And that is incomplete. And yeah, their back's up against the wall a little bit, and they come through by forcing an incompletion. Now they've got to continue to ratchet up the intensity a couple of more times and get off the field before giving up any more yardage. Now a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. Well, it looked like a march to the end zone has hit a momentary roadblock with that incompletion. No need to panic. They just got to come up with a high percentage play call and see if they can get their offense back on track. Pass taken in by his big tight end. They'll head out of bounds inside the 10, mark him down at the 9. So another third down conversion, and now they've got a first and goal. They'll try and run this one right up the gut. And only about a yard there as he takes it from the nine to the eight. Well, this defense have got the four-score advantage, and you can see why they continue to bottle up the run game, and really they've just been sharp in all facets here in this one, CD. Yeah, they've kept that offense in check the entire game, and I think it's been led by what you just talked about, that defensive front, which has not allowed. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. Joe Burrow. Hey, you're down on the scoreboard, but now your offense is in close, and this is where, as a quarterback, you say, I've got to make a play here. Doesn't matter whether it's a pinpoint throw or a scramble like this one. He takes matters into his own hands and delivers a touchdown run. Extra point by Carlson, up and good. And the lead is down to 24. Following the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Carlson. Carlson set to kick off. Taken at the goal line. And able to get this out to the 25. So here's the Chiefs offense ready for their first reps in half number two. 
And they were terrific in the first half, built up a sizable lead, and it's just been cut into a bit following the opening drive score on the other side. But this is a unit that has to be itching to get the football again. You can say that again. They've got to be pretty eager because, let's face it, they've had to sit through halftime, then sit on the sidelines and watch that drive. So you can bet that they're saying, let's get on with this. we got to go out there and get some more points. The ball on the 32. It's second and two. Brings up second and two. 32-yard line. And his throw is going to be incomplete. As a defensive back, you have some weapons at your disposal that we don't often talk about. And you can read the receiver's eyes, you can read his hands, and you know that the arrival of the ball is imminent, and that allows you to make a play on it and oftentimes knock it away. And he will have a Chiefs first down by a couple of yards as they're able to convert here on third and three. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Now here's a little touch pass as they tap it quickly to their receiver. And they're going to stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and 10. No gain on the play. Second and 10. At the 37-yard line. They'll run out of the gun with Pacheco. Shoves him aside. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. 49 yards now on the ground on just seven carries. We don't talk about it very often, but sometimes there's a dip in intensity when you start the second half, which can manifest itself in some sloppy tackling. And how about right there? He ran right through that weak tackle attempt. Back to throw now on first down. Able to find Gray here. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and it'll be second down. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Second and three. Over the middle and complete to Addison. And they just keep marching right along. First down on a pickup of eight there. eight-yard pickup. And the first down, Chiefs. Pacheco gets it up the gut. And that one opened up for him well as he'll take this down to the 26-yard line. An 11-yard pickup, and it's enough for a Chiefs first down. Inside four minutes to go, third quarter. They'll look to throw now on first down. And he fires one incomplete. Well, a momentary speed bump there with that throw, partner. The defense had other ideas, and they're trying to mount a small stand before this drive reaches the end zone. And second and ten, he'll look to throw again. Open man right side is Rice. And they've got it inside the ten at the eight. 18 yards that time to push him up first and goal. And I'll tell you what, this offense is playing a little bit of keep away right now. They've come out here in the third quarter, possessed the ball for quite a while, and they keep on converting. Nice pitch and catch there to set up the first and goal. They'll look to throw. And he's got his man in stride, complete. That'll bring up second and goal after the gain of five. Jordan Emerson, a gain of five, brings up second and goal at the three-yard line. Toss right side to Pacheco, and he is going to lose yardage here. It goes as a loss of six, and now third down. Partner, I know we're in a goal-to-go situation, but my goodness, think about running the ball here. Not even a thought, is yeah, it? Defensively, they're in a prime spot. And I think the defensive guys are probably expressing themselves. In trouble, and he'll go down back at the 12. Only a three-yard loss there on the sack, but more importantly, it leads to a fourth and goal. Now Harrison Butker for the field goal try. And this one will be a 29-yard attempt. Butker's kick here is good, and that will extend their lead even further. I got to think at this point, third quarter, if you're able to hold on to the ball, get three at the end, that's all you're looking for. I would agree with that because right now, this is a job well done by them. In fact, it's almost time for handshakes, a little dap on the sidelines, maybe even start to discuss post-game plans. And for the guys who haven't played yet, go ahead and get loose. Your time is now. The Browns offense trotting back onto the field. 
Well, we haven't exactly been treated to a nail biter in this one, CD. And if they cannot score here, this one's pretty much all but over. Are you saying that you feel like people are starting to think about getting out of here, maybe beating the traffic in order to get home or to their final destination? Uh, yeah, I don't think there's a whole lot of reason to hang around, especially if they can't score here. Yeah, you're right about that because it has been pretty clear who the better team has been in this one. And in a league that we talk about every game being a one-score game as we go into it, watching this blowout, let's just say it's been unusual. And he's going to have a Browns first down as he'll take this forward to the 27th. First and 10 at the 27 yard line. They'll run on first down. Rainey, and he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. That's going to wind up a loss of a full three yards on first down. Well, we saw a lot of negative plays that resulted in plenty of lost yardage in the first half. And that trend is continuing here. After the loss, they'll come up second and 13. And now they will throw it with Burrow. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. They'll wind up getting just a yard out of it. And they'll be facing a third and 12. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. The Browns on third down. They've converted six times and could use a seventh here. This is third down and 12. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have a Browns first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. A couple of first downs have him to the 40 now on first and 10. Now it's Burrow. Oh, he dropped it. And that's pretty indicative of the way this one's gone. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. They're passing here, Joe Burrow. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Here's Burrow. That is caught. And he'll be brought down with a first down as the tackle's made at the Chiefs 43. Give him 10 yards there as this offense is on a roll. And this drive continues to plunge forward. First and 10 at the 43 yard line. On first down, they'll go to the ground attack. And a good job of finding the open space to run as he's down close to the 30 here. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Burrow looking to pass. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. It'll go as a gain of four, and it'll be second down. It's now second and six at the Chiefs 27-yard line. They'll send a receiver in motion to the left. Now a fake on the jet sweep, and they'll instead run up the middle. And he'll take this down just shy of the 25-yard line. Already a pair of third down conversions for them on this drive, but right now they need five yards on this third down try. Burrow will throw. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have the Browns first down. They needed five there on third down. He winds up getting seven. First down, Rainey, and good downhill running. He's got six yards down to the 13. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. Now Burrow to throw on second down. That is caught at the seven-yard line. And the Browns are going to have a first and goal as the tackle is made at about the five. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he goes backwards on this one. Losing yardage to the seven. That sends him two yards in the wrong direction and leads to second down. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. This will be caught at about the six. 
And now timeout is whistled as it appears there's a Brown shaken up on the play. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury, and we'll be back in a moment. Third and goal, trying to make that scoreboard at least a little more respectable. Looking to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. Well, also a drive that spans all that time, and yet you may only come away with three points here. Well, your defense, all right, they actually like these long drives. They get to rest over on the sidelines for a while. But when you're not finishing with points in terms of touchdowns... And he's brought down. Can't do anything with a football. It's a sack and a turnover on downs. And now timeout is whistled as it appears there's a Brown shaken up on the play. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. They'll start the drive here with Pacheco. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Here's Pacheco once again. There he goes, left side. Now he's loose down the left sideline. And he's going to get it all the way down to the 10-yard line. A big play there for KC. 65 yards on the ground. Hate to be blunt, but it is just continuing to prove to be the case that this O-line is manhandling this D-line right now. They deserve to roll up their sleeves and show up their biceps because they're doing exactly what you just described, manhandling the defensive front. They've got the leverage, they are powering through, and they're controlling this game. So not quite a first and goal. It's first and 10 from the 10. They'll set up to throw. And he takes this into the end zone for a Chiefs touchdown. A 10-yard touchdown run. And the Chiefs look like they're going to get back in the win column as they extend their lead here in this fourth quarter. Nothing like understanding where your escape hatches are as a quarterback. Here he's looking, but he knows he doesn't want to force anything. So when nothing avails itself, he slips past the rushers, takes it right up the middle, and takes it into the end zone. Extra point by Butker is on target. And this one was over a while ago as they just add on to that big lead. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much as he's marked out officially at the 21. The Browns set to take over. And you see a lot of frustrated faces as they are inching closer to a fourth straight loss. Now Burrow on first down. Steps away to his left. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. He'll get five out of the scramble. It's second down. Back to throw here. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. That one, a first down pickup of eight. First and 10 at the 34-yard line. They'll set up a throw. And that's to the left sideline and incomplete. Well, it just seems like all game long, there hasn't been a lot of sync quarterback to wide receiver on this side of the football. They haven't been on the same page, quarterback and receivers. Heck, they haven't been on the same grease board when you draw plays up. They haven't been on the same surface tablet that you look at on the sidelines. Nothing's worked for them. They've got to find a way to start matching each other's movements. Third down and six. And Burrow going to throw again. Quick hitter here. It's complete. And he is going to have a Browns first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and ten. Now Burrow. And his throw is incomplete. Uh, defensively, you look at the numbers. Another incomplete pass that we just saw. And they're under 200 yards passing for the game. So they've done their job on that side of the ball. Yeah, recently I was actually working a game where a quarterback had a streak of five straight games without a 200-yard game. And that was a big talk, both in his town and amongst his team. How do we get the passing game going? So... 
big credit to them holding them under 200 today. On third down, Burrow. And he's taken down, a chief sack. Derek Brown able to get him down for a loss of 11. And it brings up fourth down. We all know he's one of the better quarterbacks in the league, but definitely not today. His team trailing by multiple touchdowns and a late sack, just a parting gift from the defense for him to take back to the locker room with him. The Browns send out their punter now as he's on for the fifth time here today. Fielded at the 20. A 39-yard punt, a return of five. And that will come the offense as they take over. And now here comes Kansas City. This has really just been a lopsided affair. What a performance they put on, and now they get the football back here with a big lead in the fourth quarter. You know, in the past, we might be discussing dinner plans, talking about steak and sushi, whatever the case is, CD. This ball game is pretty much well in the books. Yeah, we really could have started bringing up dinner a long time ago if we wanted to, partner. And I think a few of the guys out in the field already making plans for the evening. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So the Chiefs in possession of the ball as we welcome you back. They've got a second down now as they look to salt this one away. Pacheco gets it again on second down. And he's going to be down at the 35. Gain of seven. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. Brings up third and inches. They'll try for the first with Pacheco. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. Just to pick up a three, but that is indeed enough. Well, someone's been having a good game so far, and you know something? Lava's been power running. They decided to turn him loose again on third down, didn't they? They did indeed. He delivered the tough yards. On first and ten, here's Pacheco. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. But Charles, a lot of happy faces heading into the tunnel as this one ends, and understandably so. Not only did they get the win, but boy, their offense was on fire in this ball game. And partner, I have no idea what the top speed is on one of those high-end sports cars. What's the top gear you can get into? This offense, they certainly were there in this one, huh? Everything clicking for them in this contest, the kind of performance that they're going to cherish. So for the Chiefs, it'll be a 500 start as the win gets them back to 2-2. Two and two. And they'll get another road test next week as they have to go to Santa Clara to take on the 49ers. Meanwhile, for Cleveland, they'll sink now to 0-4. And, and they'll try to turn things around next week as they have a matchup in Cincinnati against the Bengals. And for Charles Davis and our entire crew here at EA Sports, I'm Brandon Gordon saying so long, everybody.
It's week four of the National Football League. And coming up, it's the 49ers. Fall is in the air, and the NFL season is in full swing, and we're underway here in week four. This fielded right at the goal line. happening on the return is he'll get this to about the 23. Now it looks like we've got a Bronco that's banged up on the play. We'll step aside and get a report when we come back to Denver. They start the drive on the ground. It's Williams. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. 
The game's first play produces six yards. Brings up second down. On the option to give to Williams here. And he works his way forward for a couple up past the 30. You look at this Niner defense. And they've been excellent against the pass. The number six unit in the NFL. You have to like the way that they've played in the first month. They have to be very proud being a top ten unit against the pass. Their goal, though, in this one, see if they can improve that ranking. And he will have the Broncos first down. And he's going to have it by 20. Able to get eight yards there on third and two. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw it, and was able to make the sure catch and put the down marker back to one. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. And his throw's going to be incomplete. But he'll definitely say that that's one he should have held on to. But when you're playing in elements like this, sometimes those bullet passes, those ones with a little bit of pace on them, they can be difficult to hold on to. He'll try again with the arm here on second down. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. They'll look to throw again. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Cohen. And this won't be enough. A good secured tackle, and they stop him a few yards shy at the 46. The Broncos send out their punter now. As the first drive of the game stalls out, he's on to punt. He punted four times in the loss last week as he gets this one away here. It'll wind up just a 35-yard punt, no return. And the 49ers will take over deep in their own territory. So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. And they are led out there by their mobile quarterback. I like this guy. And the reason I do, he tends to stand an even keel. Doesn't let too much ruffle him. He will manage the game the way it needs to be managed. Take what the defense gives him. And then he can strike at times. Had a touchdown pass. Yes, he had an interception last week. But he found a way for his team to win. The numbers for Walker last week, pretty good as he found himself in the end zone on two separate occasions. And those are the most important numbers because no matter what you pile up prior to the goal line, getting in is all that matters. Putting those numbers up on the board, and they love them when they're sixes. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. A tough running, but not a ton to show for it. They stop him shy of the 25. Two yards on the carry there, and it's going to lead him to third down. They'll try for the first with Walker. And down he'll go at the 25. Got what he needed for the first down with a gain of two. The Niners at 3-0 here in the month of September. And they're coming on a pretty good roll here. Winners at three straight. And the offense last week, they certainly had things humming because if you can run up 40-plus points a game, you certainly take a lot of pressure off of your defense, and you're not going to lose very often. And they work this well upfield across the 45. That good for 22 and a first down. You were telling me this yesterday. This is exactly what they want to do on the opening drive, establish the ground game. Yeah, remember our conversation? We were talking about what one of the GMs in the league has told me repeatedly. It's a big man's game, and it's not necessarily size. He's talking about playing some big boy football. Line up, get leverage, knock people back, and establish the run early. This one complete downfield on the left side. And he'll cross over out of bounds right at the 25. That'll be marked as a 27-yard pickup. Back to throw now on first down. And that'll be off the mark too far out in front, and it's incomplete. Nice job there, forcing that incompletion. This is going to be a fun battle throughout this game. Watching him try to take away that area of the field. Now to the ground. Here's Walker. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on that one as it brings up a third and ten. He'll drop to throw. 
Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos' 12-yard line. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. Well, I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere, and they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people, but you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well, and that's what they just did on that play. And he can't find anywhere to go with it, and he goes down. He couldn't get rid of it. He takes a sack for a loss of six to bring up second down. He'll look to throw. Green's got it over the middle. Now it looks like we've got a Bronco that's banged up on the play. We'll step aside and get a report when we come back to Denver. Still needing 10 yards. Now it's third down. Now back to throw. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. So two third down conversions on this drive, but not able to get a third, and now they deal with fourth down. Jake Moody now on for the field goal. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. And his kick is right there. It's good. And the 49ers take a 3-0 lead. So after the main field goal by Moody, he's back out to kick this one away. They'll elect to bring it out here from the end zone. And he's probably realizing he should have stayed in the end zone as he can only muster a return to the 14-yard line. So now the second drive offensively coming up for the Denver Broncos. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and ten coming up. No gain on the play. Brings up second and ten. At the 14 yard They'll look to throw here. Running free at the 45. Still going inside the 20. And all the way home for the Broncos score. Marvin Mims, his second touchdown on the season. And the Broncos are able to answer the early three points and take a first quarter lead. And Charles, I had an offensive coordinator tell me one time that they designed every play to score. I don't know how true that is, but he had to run a long way after that catch. Heck of a play. I think that when he was telling me that, he was designing run after catch in every play. <laughs> I mean, that, that's the only way to put it in there, and that's what we got on that one. Nice catch, an even better run for big yardage. A good hold in these wet conditions. The point after is up and good, and that makes it a 7-3 lead. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. Kenneth Walker headed back out there. First month of the season, those numbers pretty solid. Does he continue that? I think so, because when you come out of the gate this strong, that means that you have planned for it and you like the results that you're getting. So I wouldn't have any doubt that the head coach, offensive coordinator, actually called in and <laughs> called him in and said, look, you're our guy. Okay, we're going to continue to stick with this as long as we're winning games. You ready for the challenge? And then they presented it to the rest of the team. I think we'll see plenty of that as the season moves on. And I'm sure he said challenge accepted. And he gets this up to the 34 out of bounds there. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. And going right back to Walker. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. But just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. And I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. Walker now on first and 10. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. Up the middle they run. It's Walker. And space tough to come by there as he'll get maybe a yard to the 37. Third and 12.
They're going to look to throw. And that is incomplete. That's well done defensively. They get the pressure they needed on third down. All the receivers are locked up tight, and they force that quarterback to just throw it away. And the win last week punted four times as this one's away. Here comes Cohen. It's a 45-yard punt, but a decent return there of nine yards. And the Broncos take over. First down and 10. Denver's offense ready to go again. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. This defense for the Niners, they were terrific last week in the win over the Rams. And what I saw on film was a nearly unstoppable pass rush. Five sacks last week, plenty of hurries given up. So now what do you do on offense? You just match protect, keep everyone in and run the ball, and maybe just one or two receiver routes in order to try to keep your quarterback up right. 49ers have an extra defensive back on the field, a nickel set for third down. He'll look to throw. He's got a man complete. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. They'll get 34 yards there. Well, Park, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play. They picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. And he can't quite bring it in. Might have heard footsteps there across the middle. Second down. On the counter, here's Williams. Flash the stick skills, but didn't get a ton from it. Stopped short of the 35. So third down now. They need the 27-yard line for a first. They'll drop to throw. And too much juice. It'll be out of bounds incomplete. Zone coverage there, and they were playing deep. That makes it obviously a little bit harder to run by guys. And that time, there was not much of a window to get the ball in there, and it winds up incomplete. And this is good. It was running kind of gas there at the end, but he winds up getting just enough on it. And they push the lead up to a touchdown now at 10 to 3. These kickers now, it used to be that a 50-plus yarder was cause for celebration, now seemingly automatic. Yeah, isn't it funny? When we prepare for a game, when you look at the backgrounds of these kickers, it's interesting, isn't it, to find out they were all-state quarterbacks, receivers, defensive backs, all-state wrestlers, right? Baseball players. We're finding athletes all along, and now they're just specialists putting it through the posts. The 49er offense set to get this drive underway. The last series for him, a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and ten. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and that'll make it second down. Ten three our score after one here on EA Sports. The 49ers with the football here to begin the second quarter. From the 24 now, here's second down and five. Here's the option. He has enough for the first down and the keeper a gain of six. And this is one of those plays that if you can use it to keep the chains moving, it's a good play. And not only that, it tends to tamp down the pass rushers because they have to recognize this play and stay at home. The quarterback uses it well. Read option, keeps it, and picks up a first down with some nice running. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. And we're going to stop play here at least momentarily. It looks like there is a 49er who's in some discomfort. We'll step aside and get a report when we come back to Denver. And now a first chance for the backup here to throw. He's going to get this one out 
to his fullback. Short completion, just four yards, and that's going to bring up second down. I wouldn't be surprised to see the next step in utilizing this position is to actually utilize more of a scat back in this spot because we saw the catch there, right? He made it. It's a bigger, stronger guy, maybe not quite as elusive as maybe someone else you would put in. Didn't get the big yardage there. You might have a smaller back. The offense on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This will be third and five. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is going to have a 49ers first down by about a yard as they find a way to convert there on third down and five. Up the middle, here's Walker. And they nearly sprung him that time as he takes this all the way down to the 37. The Niners have the first down on a gain of 11. Well, if they continue to run the football this strong right up the middle, I don't know if they can wait till halftime to make adjustments. They better find a way to get it done series to series. I don't know if they need to sub some guys out, bring in extra people, maybe change what they're doing on the defensive side of the ball. But right now, they're running the ball very well right out of and right up the middle. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Now Jones. Throw left side complete. That's Patterson. Only able to gain a couple there. And it's second down. A gain of two brings up second and eight at the Broncos 18-yard line. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. Four yards on the pickup there as it'll leave him with a third and about four more for a first. Throwing Jones. Under pressure, and he'll go down. Back at the 26-yard line. He couldn't get away there on third down. The pressure too much, and he's sacked for a loss of 12. I think you saw the same thing that I did there, partner. Remember, he's their backup quarterback, so the last thing they need is to lose another one right here on the sack. Looks like he's going to be okay, though. Yeah, he looked like he was favoring something in the left leg. Appears to be fine now, but you're right. That old line, they got to protect him. And his kick here is good. And that'll bring him back within four. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks would tell us end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal you'll take. Punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. So here are the Broncos to take over on offense. They're on top here as they come up on a first and ten, trying to make amends for that lost week at the hands of Seattle. They'll try and start this drive in the air. That's to the sideline and incomplete. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he led him just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground, incomplete. And second and ten, he'll look to throw again. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Williams. And they've got it right across midfield, down to the 40 before it's all said and done. That'll go as a pickup of 32 on the catch and run. Running their plays over and over during the week can often get robotic for an offense, but on game day, they can often flow smoothly, as that one just did. So the big play moves them all the way across midfield to the 40 now for first and 10. They'll look to throw. And his throw here is incomplete. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Now a give up the middle to Williams. And he's going to have this pretty close to a first down as the tackle is made at the Niners 31. Heavy set out there on third and one. They'll try and run for it. Here's Williams. 
And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the close fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. They tried their best to pick up that third and one, but their surge wasn't enough to counteract what came back at them from the defensive side, was it? Offensive line, especially in the middle, looked like they were on skates a little bit when that one started. So now we bring up fourth and inches. This would be a critical call. Back to throw. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Broncos unable to convert here on fourth. And the 49ers are going to get the football back. So the defense has to stay out and get one more stop. They were able to do it, forcing the incompletion. So on their record, that goes down as a successful play. Doesn't matter how they got there, how it happened. They got it done. They're the ones that are jubilant. They throw right away, and that's complete out on the right side. And we're going to stop play here, at least momentarily. It looks like there is a 49er who's in some discomfort. We'll step aside and get a report when we come back to Denver. Now second and eight at the 32-yard line. Back to throw. Jones. A short throw here to Watson. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. His first catch of the game, good for 11 and a first down. Straight ahead, Walker. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. Second and ten. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And he rifles one incomplete. I well, certainly didn't like what he saw at all from the coverage on his primary reads. And he didn't even have any luck trying to get back to a safety valve. Give defense a credit. Covered was in lockdown mode everywhere. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. Nice back-to-back -back plays defensively. They're stacking momentum now. One incompletion, two incompletion. They're going for more. And now a high kick here as they'll try to cover this one. Fair catch taken just inside the 40-yard line. It'll go as just a 15-yard punt. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at their 38. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. It's caught on the right side. Williams. Call it a gain of a yard, and that'll bring up second down. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. He's just not at his focus in this game. It's not one drop. It's not two. That's three for this contest. Yeah, uncharacteristic for any NFL receiver, and he's no... And down he goes! The 49ers get there. Nick Bosa, he's the one to get him, and that is sack number seven for him on the year. This offensive line has struggled. In fact, when we sat down with the coach, he said, it's been in tatters lately. They allowed six sacks in their last game. Just gave up another one right there. In tatters, so it sounds a little bit like this right now. Exactly. It's like that paper being ripped. And right now, they've got to find a way to get it back together. The Broncos send out their punter now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Here's Hill on the return. 35 yards that time on the punt. And the Niners will go on offense first and 10. Kenneth Walker headed back out there. And the ground game's been good, but they're losing here in the second quarter. Can they use that ground game maybe to work the air attack a little bit more? I think so, because now you can throw play action off of being able to run the ball effectively. And oftentimes, you might want to just swing your back out of the backfield, get the ball in his hands in open space, and just don't get total away from running it because some of these runs now, they may pop bigger as the game goes along. Yeah, they've been good with the run so far. On second and 10, Jones. Throw out wide to Walker. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 13 yards there and a Niner first. First down, 
Hand off here to Walker. And he fights forward for a modest two-yard gain. Second down. Two yards on the pick up there. It'll be second and eight. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. Coming up at halftime, I'll go from one personality, that's you, Charles Davis, to another one in Orlando, the coach. He'll have stats and scores from around the NFL. You and Jonathan Coachman, both larger than life. No doubt about it. But you're stuck with me in this booth, <laughs> yes, and he's miles away and smiling. And happy. 15 for the Niners there and a first down. A lot of tight ends just use their size and their strength, try to occupy some space and kind of body people away and catch the football. But not this guy. He's a refined route runner. Makes me wonder if he took some dance classes in his background with his footwork. On first and 10, Jones. And a quick throw here. That's complete. Call it a gain of six on the play, and it'll be second down. Off play action, Jones. And he's got his man on the out route. And he'll go out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. There's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. They're putting together a drive here in the final minutes of the half. But the coverage has been tight all game long, and they certainly want to keep them off the scoreboard here. To throw on second and ten, Jones. That's to the pylon and incomplete. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. Again, he'll drop to throw. And he'll go down, brought down at the 20-yard line. Now the Broncos are going to call the first of their timeouts as the clock stops here with 46 seconds remaining in the first half. And this one is right through. And that gets him back within a single point. It's now 10-9. to nine. So he's been a busy man here in this first half. That's three field goals for him now. And not just three field goals, but three for three. So even though the offense has struggled a bit putting it in the end zone, has still been able to come away with points due to his leg. And taken down just past the 20 at about the 21-yard line. The Broncos going to go on offense now late in this first half. And with a one-point lead, you'd have to think they'll be looking just to get this to halftime. They'll come out throwing here on first down. His throw incomplete. I think he could have scanned downfield forever, but there wasn't anything available. Ends up throwing an incompletion, and I think he'll take that. He'll try again with the arm here on second down. Under pressure, and they got to him again. The 49ers now going to use the first of their timeouts. Not wanting to risk another sack, they'll play it safe with a run. Now San Francisco going to call their second timeout. And they'll indeed stop him on third down. And now what do you want to do with your timeouts? And here's a fair catch taken at about the 24-yard line. Kenneth Walker headed back out there. They're behind in the first half here, CD, but it's not through any fault of their running back. He's had a strong start to this one. And you're right about that, partner, because watching him play, you would think that his team is in the lead. He has been a lot of fun in this contest. Now let's see if they can actually make something happen and put more points on the board behind his efforts. Yeah, I'm curious to see, Charles, if they can play complimentary football and get that passing game going as well. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Not wanting to take a chance this time. They'll keep it on the ground. Now the Broncos are going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 17 seconds to go in this first half of action. And this effort will not get it done. He stopped well short of the first down at the 29. Now the Broncos will use their third and final timeout. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. So good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at their own 46. Back to throw here. Looks to the sideline and has Mims who makes a catch. His second catch. This one not quite as dynamic as his first. And it's second down. 
A six-yard pickup brings up second and four. And this won't get there. Won't be on the line either. It's no good. Off to the right. And this is going to remain a one-point game. One of the few things that hasn't gone right in this first half. They had a chance there for late points. But this one winds up off the mark. So with one second left in the half, on is the field goal unit. This will approach NFL record territory. It's a 62-yard attempt. That's running out of steam, and it won't get there. He left it just short. No good. So that would have been something from that distance, but to no avail. Comes up empty as we have reached the intermission. As now we send you out to Orlando and hook back up with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Brandon, we'll get back to you guys in a bit. But first, time for a trip around the league on this final weekend of September. We'll start our tour out in the City of Angels, Los Angeles. And it's the Packers who have the lead in that one. Trey Lance with a couple of touchdown passes. Next, we head off to check out another game. And things didn't work out so well as they fall to the visiting New England Patriots. Tua Tungavailoa, three touchdown passes as his guys stay unbeaten on the year. Lastly, let's head up to the Twin Cities to check in on the Vikings at home in Minneapolis. And they were losers in that one to the visiting Arizona Cardinals. Kyler Murray, a strong performance there, over 300 yards passing with three touchdowns in the victory. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. Forecast calling for more of the same. The rain set to continue as we are underway in the second half. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Here comes the 49ers offensive unit as they'll have it first to begin this third quarter. So out of the locker rooms, here they come. Their first drive of the third quarter, and Charles, they're trailing in this ball game, but we got a tight one and set up to be a very entertaining second half. And as we know, partner, in the NFL, there's trailing and there's trailing, right? Sometimes you're discouraged by how much you're down, but in this case, this is a tight ball game, so there's a sense of optimism here. I think they went in the half and looked at their play sheet and said, these are the plays we really like. What do you say we use them to start the second half and get us going? Second down, but this one is incomplete. You get the sense that they're saying we're not playing up the way we're capable of, and we're deep enough into the game that the early jitters are long gone. That they should now have some sense of continuity and be able to make some of these plays that they have not been doing so far. And yeah, they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. Give them 22 there on the third down conversion. We often hear the phrase sure-handed tight ends, and he certainly fits into that category. Plus, he's got a quarterback who knows to look his way when they need a big pickup. And on this play, he finds him for the first down. Jones on first and 10. Green brings it in. So five yards here, five on the play. And that will bring up second down. A gain of five brings up second and five at the 46-yard line. They'll give it up to the big man, Walker. And just a short gain that time as they're able to get him down. He may be a bit undersized compared to the modern-day NFL defensive tackle. But when he lacks in size, he definitely makes up for it in his ability to make tackles in the run game as well. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he'll go out of bounds right around the 40. It'll be a pickup of four. Good enough to earn him yet another first down. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed picking up the first. Call it a gain of three on the play, and it's second down. Looking to throw. 
Jones. And he's got the hook up to McLeod. And this is going to be another first down as he'll make the tackle at the Broncos 23. Just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. Now what we're seeing, this is much better from this offense because so far in this game, no touchdown to this point. And what's usually a direct correlation? Very few explosive plays. That's been their issue. Not able to make that big shot downfield or break one off. But a nice game there for a first down. Now a toss left side into the hands of his tight end. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And it'll be second down. Brings up second and seven at the 20 yard line. Back to throw again. Got an open man. It's McLeod. So the completion good for just three. And now we've got a third and four. They'll look to throw again to the sideline. And wow, what a catch there. He doesn't get a lot, but he was able to get the feed down complete. They'll give him four yards there. And that's going to make it fourth down. Jake Moody now on for the field goal. From the right hash, and this one just a chipping. And his kick is good. And they take the lead here by two, 12-10. Well, they don't get a touchdown here on the opening drive of the third quarter, but I think maybe you still say mission accomplished as they come away with the lead. No, absolutely. You keep the pressure on, right? You go downfield, get some points up on the board, and hope that you've motivated your defense to take the field and hold that lead. And in hindsight, probably should have taken a knee as he only gets this out to the 16-yard line. So now a look at the Broncos as they head back out there for their first possession of the second half. And they find himself trying to fit it into Moore, but it's intercepted. And he'll bring it back to the nine-yard line. They had him back deep, got the interception, and now they start inside the 10. Hard to forget starting inside the red zone. They're inside the green zone. From the 10-yard line in, a lot of teams call it that because that's the money zone. Get it into the end zone and make your cash. The 49ers offense making its way back out there. And they start in the best of all positions. First and goal. Suddenly it's first and goal after the interception. A quick change in the situation here. Now here's a look for the end zone, but that one's going to wind up incomplete. Partner, this is almost an unwinnable spot for a defense. They have to come right out for a first and goal trying to stop them. But let me hold on a second. Let me take that back real quick. They can win here if they force a field goal try. Still a long ways away from that happening, but that has to be what they're thinking right now. Well, they'd really like to make the short field pay off. We'll see if they can, but this is third and goal. Operating from the gun, Jones. And he hauls it in in the end zone. Touchdown, San Francisco. A great play there. His first touchdown on the year. And the Niners take the interception on defense and convert it into six points. Well executed there offensively. Defense looked a little confused, but he found his receiver, and that one good for six points. And the payoff we just saw there tells us how many times they ran this play in practice over the past few weeks because they executed that flawlessly right here on game day when the situation arose. Moody good with the extra point, and that makes this a nine-point game. So following the touchdown, here's Moody back out to send it away. The return man down to a knee, and this will come out to the 25-yard line. So the Broncos coming out now. So now, Charles, this drive, maybe a touch more important, trying to erase the memory of that interception they had the last time out. Yeah, and everyone goes through this because even the best in the game, you're going to have games where it just doesn't go right for you and interceptions result. So, frankly, to me, it's all about how you respond, not just the types of plays that you call, but how you carry yourself how you show your team that you're still with it and how you continue to lead. So the completion results there in nine yards, and it'll bring up a second and short. He'll drop to throw, and the Niners get there and bring him down. 
Chase Young in there for the sack, and it's an important one from a personal standpoint as that is sack number 100 in what has certainly been a terrific career to this point. He'll look to throw. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. Now a first down carry. It's Williams. There's a nice move. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. He had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. Now a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. And you just know when that play call came in, their eyes lit up because anytime you get a chance to take a big shot downfield, that's a lot of fun, and they missed an opportunity. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. It's been clear in this matchup which side has been the more physical one. It's been this defense. And here's another example on that last play. The Broncos send out their punter now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. He'll send this one into the mile high air. It's a good one. So that'll be marked down as a 19-yard punt. And they will take over first and 10. The 49ers offense now. They work their way back onto the field. Now Jones. And his throw's going to be incomplete. That was well defended. They clamped down on every available receiver. Just got to give the win to the defense on that snap. On second down, it's Walker. He is taken down at the 21 after a short gain of two. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. 4C in completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in the expected passing situation. And he's taken down. Back at his own seven. Now it looks like we've got a Bronco that's banged up on the play. We'll step aside and get a report when we come back to Denver. Here comes the 49ers punter now as he's on to kick it away. Fair catch called for. No gimme in these conditions, but he's able to look this one in. So a change of possession here on the punt. And coming out now, the Broncos. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. Williams going to get it again on second down. And again, the run defense stout this time. He maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage, but no more. Call it no gain there, and now they're looking at a third and 13. And not an easy spot here. They'll be in search of 13 yards to try to pick up the first. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. Well, we're into the second half now, and this is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. Now a high kick, almost a pooch punt. Fair catch called for and taken right near the 30-yard line. That'll go down as just a 20-yard punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. The San Francisco offense ready to start their next drive. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tend to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game. But why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself. On the handoff, this is Walker. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Two yards 
yards, the loss, second and 12. I thought he did a nice job there setting an edge and make sure nothing could get to the outside, but he decided that wasn't enough for him. Worked his way back inside and made the tackle on the ball carrier. Throwing Jones. He's got green. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos 42. 17 yards on the pickup there. The drive will continue. Had to put that ball in there with a little extra zip, but he put it right where it needed to be. Yeah, and that little extra pace that he had on the pass, that required a little extra concentration for him, didn't it? Ball can get on you pretty quick in that manner, and he handled it well and picked up the first down. Jones. This will be caught downfield by Moore. And they move this all the way down to the nine. A very nice pickup of 33 yards. And the catches for him, they just keep piling up. Charles, that's now 1,031 catches for his career. Ties him with Steve Smith. Yeah, and he plays the game the same way Steve did, with pride, with determination, some would say with anger. And that edge has given him the ability to catch 1,031 passes. Here's Jones. Off the bootleg. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. You got to be precise with your throws, especially in this situation. You're inside the 10-yard line going into the end zone. But sometimes the emotion, the excitement, sometimes the decisions just aren't made very well because of that. And a nice pick up there. It gets about five down to the four-yard line. Defensively, I think they can smell a stop ball right around the five here. Brings up third. And I think what they've done is they put doubt in the minds of the offensive guys. And he is going to be taken down. And that should be the final play of this third quarter. That'll be a big loss on the play there. An absolute disaster, really. So with a fourth and goal looming, we hit the end of three quarters of play. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Welcome back now to Denver. It's 49er football here. They've got the lead as well as we get set to start the fourth and final quarter. And his kick is good. And that will extend their lead even further. So that maybe not a knockout blow, but I, I suppose certainly every little bit helps when you're trying to salt one away in the fourth. Well, the possibility of being beaten by two late touchdowns or at least sent to overtime does exist. But time, definitely a big factor at this stage of the game, is in their favor. And he'll take it a yard or so past the 20, call it the 21. Denver's offense now set to go. See if they can put this drive in the end zone, Charles, because it, it's been a little bit of a rough go at times. They've had to punt the football a ton in this ball game because of stalled out drives. So are you saying that you're kind of tired of seeing the punter run out there and do his thing during this game? Is that what you're trying to say? You, well, I mean, I'm okay with it. I have a feeling that this offense, they don't want to see the punter again. And frankly, the punter doesn't want to run out there anymore himself. He'd love to see his offense put together a drive and give his leg a rest. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. And this offense on third down today, they're hitting at just 30%, three for 10. This is third and seven. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Well, that's a defense coordinator's got to be happy with that result. They took away all options downfield and forced the incompletion. The Broncos send out their punter now as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. Fair catch, signal four, and taken just shy of the 30-yard line. So here are the Niners to take over on offense. They're on a three-game winning streak and right now looking good in this one as well. Jones now throwing on first down, finding Green complete. He'll be dropped at the 30. The first broken tackle was there, but couldn't bust free. Ball on the 30 now. Here's second and nine. Operating from the gun, Jones. This one goes underneath to Walker, and he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. A nickel set defensively for the Broncos here on third down. Back to throw. 
Jones. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have a Niners first down by about three yards or so as they wind up getting seven there on third and four. A gear for Walker running right. Oh, able to avoid him. And he's out of bounds just before the midfield stripe at the 49. Here now, second and four. Sticking with Walker on second down. And a pretty athletic run right there as he's going to get this down inside the 40. 106 yards rushing now on 23 carries so far. So a first and 10 now in Denver territory at the 39-yard line. Again, it's Walker. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Brings up second and 10. At the 38 yard line. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. And the Broncos get there and take him down. Quay Walker came through to make the sack. I don't know what else can be said about this pass rush. They have been sensational. CD, that is now six sacks for them. And how many times do we talk to offensive coordinators and they say a sack is a result of everyone on offense not doing their job? But let's be honest about this one. This is the offensive line unable to counter the pass rush. They've been teeing off all game long. On third down, here's Walker. And he's going to be stopped up at about the 47-yard line. Just a one-yard pickup there, and it'll be fourth down. The best defensive linemen, they play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands. They can throw people off on a play. We just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position. So possession goes over here on the punt, and Denver getting set to take the field. Their defense was able to force the punt. That's the good news, but this is still a two-score game, and they need points on this drive and in a relatively quick manner. They'll start with the option, and he is going to lose yardage here. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Well, sometimes that option can get bogged down before the gears really even get into motion, and I think that's what we saw there. And I think what he saw, he saw a defensive end right in his face because he looked up and he was right there. Didn't even have a chance to get going. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Screen play set up for Williams. And he'll be taken down well before the first at about the 36-yard line. That'll bring up fourth down. They wind up getting eight yards, but they needed more than that. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Broncos unable to convert here on fourth. And the Niners take over in terrific field position. So they really needed points here in a two-score game. Could not come away with anything there on fourth. And while we know they're a little bit discouraged here, they can't check out of this game. You and I have called a good number of games over the course of our career where we've seen these types of situations. Teams get the ball back. And that miracle does occur. So they can't let that dream go just yet. They have to get stout on defense here. Yeah, right now, really hoping for a turnover. To throw again on second down. Jones, nine yards, not quite enough. And they'll be left now with third and one. Let's not quibble about the gain there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives a much better opportunity to convert on third down. He's got his running back out of the backfield. And he is going to have a 49ers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Now that's a big pickup right there. And so often we focus on how the quarterback's faking on play action. How about everyone being in on the deal and picking it up? Second, third levels. You can see them trying to recover. They bit. Worked out offensively. And he 
is going to take it in. Touchdown, San Francisco. Ken Walker with his fourth rushing touchdown on the year. And the Niners are going to be moving to 4-0 and as they extend their lead. So an important touchdown right there is now they're really beginning to pull away. Yeah, and this was a tight game until not too long ago. But since then, they've hit the accelerator. And they pushed the lead up to three scores here in the fourth quarter. And I don't see them looking back. Moody good with the extra point. And that will make this a 19-point game. So here's Moody back out there now to send this one away. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. And the football going back over to the Denver Broncos. And Charles, we know that this offense is aggressive. We saw that last drive. They went for it on fourth down, didn't get it. Then they give up the touchdown. So now you feel like they really need to respond here. They certainly do, but let's face it. Sometimes when you take that risk, you understand if you fail, a little more onus goes back on your ball club to try and pick themselves back up. Second and two. This one swung out to Williams. And Williams is going to pick up a Broncos first down as he'll get this up past the 35-yard line. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. This one is caught. It's and now look at this. Big game, but a fumble. But this will get out of bounds, so possession will stay the same. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. The Broncos take over first and 10 at the 33-yard line. They're going to look to throw. Wide open receiver complete. And all the way home for a Broncos score. A great effort there. 33 yards. And the Broncos have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. Great corner route there. Not only able to catch it, turn it upfield, and get into the end zone. It usually involves a little bit of an extra move, doesn't it? You've got to get them thinking that you're moving to the middle of the field and you're breaking away to that corner. Boy, that was well executed. Point after, right down the middle. And they're able to cut this deficit down to 12. And the 49er hands team does its job. And that's why you have your hands team out there on the field. Those are the best guys ready to make that play. And let's face it, it was executed well. It wasn't a bad kick. It wasn't anything like that. Just that the normal outcome actually came to play. Analytics would tell you it's a very low possibility of getting the ball for the team kicking it in an onside kick situation. You're all about the numbers, aren't all you? All about the numbers, baby. It's a new game now. They don't lie. Now Jones on first down. Caught by Green on the out route. So just three yards on the completion there. And it'll be second down. Brings up second and seven at the 47-yard line. To the right side, this is Walker. Oh, he's got some breathing room. And he'll cross over out of bounds right at the 25. That good for 22 on a first down. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. Here's a run on first down that doesn't accomplish anything. In fact, he's going to be tackled behind the line for a loss of one. Sometimes I forget how much information he has to go through before the ball's even snapped. But what a diagnosis right there. Saw the play, shot through the gap like a rocket, and ends up spilling it for a loss. On the counter, it's Walker. And he'll be taken down after a short gain as that takes us to the two-minute warning. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. This is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. 
And not enough on the throw that time as that one is incomplete. Yeah, I'm not quite sure how to judge that one. Maybe didn't have enough legs underneath him. Mechanics might have been off. Maybe some fatigue. That one came up short. Yeah, fourth quarter. Maybe you do start to watch as the arm there, the leg's still there. This has been a tough game. And his kick is indeed good. And that will extend their lead even further. So they settle for just the three. But clearly right now, anything helps trying to salt this one away in the fourth. Without a doubt. Obviously, a touchdown probably would have been the final nail to finish this thing off. But they still ate up time, got points. So while it's not mission accomplished, it's darn close. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. So the Broncos now down by 15. A little under a minute 50 remaining. They need two touchdowns and at least one two-point conversion mixed in there as well. And that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there. Forced the ball free and it's second down. It's now second and ten. Looking to throw. Back-to-back -back incompletions, but we know this is definitely four-down territory. Time not on their side. I don't think they want to try and get the first down in two installments. I think they've got to go and get it right here, right now. Blitz forthcoming as he'll look to throw. Now the Broncos are going to call the first of their timeouts as they'll get it with just over 90 seconds to go in the ball game. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. Down the left sideline. And all the way home for the Broncos score. Marvin Mims, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Broncos' decision to go for it pays off with six points. Extra point splits the uprights as this gets them back within a touchdown and a two-point conversion. A little less than 90 seconds to go. This will be an onside kick. And the 49er hands team does its job. And now looking at the clock here, they do have two timeouts, but even if they force a three and out, they're going to have very little time remaining. So that means they've got to be aggressive and find a way to knock the ball free. They've got to come up with it because they can't just rely, as you noted, on using their timeouts and getting the ball back. They might not have any time to mount an attack, even if they do play it that way. Get the football. That's their mantra. I'll tell you, far from ideal conditions to play in, but neither offense has had much trouble. Plenty of points to go around. First and 10. He'll get this down to the 38. Now the Broncos going to use the second of their timeouts as he'll get it with still a minute 20 left to go in the game. And he'll take this one down to the 36. Now the Broncos will use their third and final timeout. Now Jones as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. And he will have a Niners first down, and that ought to be the one that seals the victory. That's not the first time they've looked his way when they've needed a big play. He's been the go-to guy all game long, and they get the hookup again on third down to keep this drive alive. Down to a knee goes Jones, and that should just about seal it. And the clock will roll down to zeros. Four weeks in, 4-0. and oh. I don't think anybody needs to alert the 72 Dolphins just yet, but great start to the season. Great start. How about taking a knee at the end, and there's no better feeling for a team than to do that, to close out a victory. But you're right, at 4-0, oh, they're sending a message to the rest of the league. They're going to be tough to deal with. Well, somebody lit a fire under that offense during the break, Charles. Remember, they trailed an intermission. They come out, they have the big second half, and that lifts them to the victory. And Brandon, trailing at halftime, we always talk about teams making adjustments. You know what the best adjustments usually are? It's just executing better. Because the game plan you put in place at the beginning of the week often still holds. You don't have to make wholesale changes. You just have to do it a little bit better, a little cleaner. And they did that in the second half, and that led them to victory. So for the Niners, hey, they finish a perfect month of September as they move to 4-0 and on the new campaign. And they will head back home next week. Meanwhile, for Denver, they'll drop down to 1-3. and And they'll get a chance to redeem themselves at home next week.
That'll do it for us. I'm Brandon Gordon, alongside Charles Davis. Thanks to our entire crew as well. We'll talk to you next time. So long, everybody.
It's week four of the NFL, and we've got the Dolphins, creative quarterback. He's coming off a nice week throwing the ball, four touchdown throws. It's the Dolphins and the Titans coming up next. From beautiful South Florida, there's a look at Hard Rock Stadium in Miami. Today it's week four and we've got what should be a great one here as it'll be the Tennessee Titans taking on the Miami Dolphins. Hi everyone, Brandon Gordon, Charles Davis. Charles, you look at the Dolphins as they enter play in this one. They were winners last time out, so they'll be looking, Charles, to make it two in a row. And what I enjoyed when I watched their game tape and their victory last week is they put it together in every phase. Good offense, good defense, and some key plays on special teams. Let's see if they can get that second win in a row. Meanwhile, for the visiting Titans... season is in full swing and we're underway here in week four and he opts to not bring this one out the first drive will start at the 25 so the titans set to go to work for the first time and they will be led out by their signal caller in his second year of the nfl now and last week's loss came despite a clean game on his end throwing the ball with two touchdowns and zero interceptions his job this week is simple do it again. Continue to avoid turnovers and hope that what sunk them last week resolves itself this time around. These are his numbers from last week's contest. 13 carries, 53 yards, and a touchdown. Not a horrendous week last week running the ball, but definitely room for improvement for their numbers. No doubt they made some slight adjustments to how they're going to call plays this week in hopes they can kick those numbers up a notch. Second and four. Side caught by Pass midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. 28 yards the gain there on the catch and run. That turned into a very well orchestrated play right there. Going to work his way out of the backfield to the right. And after he looked it in, he found plenty of space to roll and picked up big yardage. So now first and 10 as they've crossed into Miami territory at the 41. He'll keep it himself, and he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. It's a loss of four there, bringing up second down. This defense for the Dolphins, they were fantastic a week ago in that win over Houston. It was a little bit of lightning talking with the defense coordinator about their performance last week because the feeling was that it was a good, solid performance. They did what they needed to do to get the job done and get the win, but definitely a few lapses that they're looking to correct. And he's going to be met at about the 43. Three yards on the gain. They're going to need to do better on this next play. It'll be third and 12. to throw here. Well, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. And the Dolphins are going to take possession of the football as they force the turnover on the opening drive. So far this season, this defense has had their issues against the pass, so that's a great sign for them to get the early pick. They yeah, a confidence builder for them and an absolute shock for the quarterback because he went into it. He saw the numbers we saw. He watched them on tape. I think he came into this one thinking this is going to be a big day, and it very well could be, but early in this one, advantage defense. Good starting field position for the Dolphins as they have it first and 10 at their own 46. Throwing to start the drive. Jarrett throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. He was looking for Jalen Waddle there. That'll bring up second down. You talk about this Titan defense. Now they've been excellent against the pass. The number six unit in the NFL. And I'm struggling a little bit trying to really categorize this crew. They're top ten in the league against the pass. But the bottom half of the league in sacking the quarterback. That doesn't make sense. Imagine if this group ever put pressure on the QB. They'd easily move into the top five. On third down. Jarrett, he's going to let this go. Back of the end zone. And unable to connect. Incomplete. A 
and give them credit. They took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. I like the fact that he took the shot deep downfield. Even if you don't get the catch, maybe you get a defensive penalty and pick up the yardage that way. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. And now where will the side judge stop his walk? That's the question. He says it crossed out of bounds at about the 17-yard line. The Titans coming back onto the field for their second drive. And their opening drive, that ended with the interception. Fortunate, though, it didn't lead to points. It didn't lead to points. And because they kind of got away with one, maybe you come back and throw something similar again to show that you're not afraid, that you're not going to back down and take your shot. Let the defense know that you're going to be there all game long. Here's second and 10. Up the middle they go. Winslow. And he almost gets this to the 30, taken down about a yard shy. 13 yards is the pickup for Tennessee and a first down. That O-line, they cleared a big hole there on that run. The athleticism of offensive lines continues to evolve, and we're seeing it here. Not only are they controlling things right at the line of scrimmage, but they're able to get upfield to get to what we call the second and the third levels. You know, get to linebacker spot, the secondary spot, getting all the way downfield with their blocking, which helps keep the running back clean. They'll try to continue that trend here this afternoon. Now he'll look to throw here on second and 10. Oh, he'll want that one back. Incomplete. He doesn't drop too many in that department. Third down. Back to throw. A throw left sideline falls incomplete. That certainly looks like nothing to show now from these first two possessions. And guess what? When you're on a losing streak, that can lead to a full sense of, here we go again. So on the sidelines, the offensive play callers, quarterback, they've got to get together and dial something up to start their next drive. Otherwise, it could be a long game. 43 yards on the punt, seven-yard return, and it'll be Dolphin football. So Miami coming out for their second drive. And the last drive, the first drive for them, not very good. Three and out. What do they go to here? Well, you don't look down at your play sheet and say, this is what the problem is. I always find out who my playmakers are. Get the ball in their hands and make the offensive move a little bit. Sometimes it's more important to get it to the right people rather than dialing up the right number. Exactly. Or the right play, yeah. That too. <laughs> yard line. On first down, Jarrett. A short one here, caught by McBride. The completion, but they go in the wrong direction. A loss of yards, and now they're dealing with a second and long. Looking to throw, Jarrett. And that'll fall incomplete. He was hit just as he let that go. And now it's third down. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And a throw there going to be incomplete. How about the show put out by these two defenses in this first half? The fireworks don't have to be just offensively. Neither one of them given an inch, and that's good coverage once again there to force another fourth down. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. And this will depend on the spot as it sails out of bounds. And they'll say it sailed out at the 10-yard line. Here's Tennessee ready to begin this drive offensively. We've seen both of these offenses still sort of in that figuring things out phase, but I suspect some action on the scoreboard soon as they start out here first and 10. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And brought in downfield by Burks. And he'll be corralled well upfield right around the 40-yard line. That one goes for 30 yards. As we've seen over the years, offense coordinators will often ease their way into drives. Many of them don't want to risk a turnover or put their defense in a bad spot. But not in this case. Not at all. Forget about easing into it. They took a shot. It worked. Now the big play pushes them all the way out to the 40 now for first down. Now a handoff up the middle. Winslow, he had to fight that time. Ran through one tackle, but ultimately he's only going to get back to the line of scrimmage. 
So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. Out of the gun again to Spears. Ooh, the juke. They had able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. They'll go to the air here on third and two. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he's going to be taken down. Plus, there's a penalty flag in the backfield. They may get 15 more on top of this. A bad time for a roughing penalty. And they get the gift of a first and ten. Up the middle they go. Winslow. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple and that's it. This is second and eight. They suspected it was a power play up the middle coming at them. And boy, were they right. That defense got downhill in a hurry and limited them to just a couple on first down. And he'll lose yardage. Brought down at the 32. And they got to get to the 23 here on third. They'll set up a throw. He's to the 15. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins' 13-yard line. A third down gain of 19. So he turned to a trusted, familiar face in that third down situation. It paid off. Yeah, you go to your veteran receiver in that spot. So you can't underestimate him when he's on the field defensively. Make sure you know where he is because he understands how to get open in key situations. Back to throw now on first down. Throwing middle and it's complete. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. From the five, here's second and two. He's going to try and take off with it. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. Four yards on the play, and that leads to the first and goal. They'll try to run it in, going option right. And maybe the wrong read there as he's going to go down immediately. That's going to go as a loss of four, and it'll be second down. And the hole closes quickly here. He can fight only to about the four. Only a yard there on the keeper, and that's going to leave him with a third down. He'll look to throw. And down he goes. Pressure gets him back at the 14. Jalen Phillips drops him for a loss of 10, and it's going to be fourth and long. Let's talk about how teams are so competitively matched, and you just want to make those plays that give you an advantage. How about right here? The difference between letting them score a touchdown versus holding them to a field goal, that's absolutely huge with the play he just made. And you know he hated taking the loss there on third down. And his kick is right there. It's good. And the Titans hit the scoreboard first. It's three to nothing. So, Charles, they are on the board after that kick. So, three drives, three points. Obviously not the start that you were hoping for, but they're able to erase that zero off the scoreboard. Yeah, I guess what you're saying is a point of drive is not what offenses are striving for by any stretch. They're happy they've got three now. They hope that that unlocks their offense for bigger points down the road. Now a play fake here on first down. Open man downfield is Waddle. He's got it. And they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. Great way to start the drive. 20 big ones in a first down. Off the play fake. Jarrett. And that's going to be incomplete. The Dolphins at 2-1 now to start the campaign, and they move back above 500 with a victory last week. And you look at their start, a win, a loss, then a win. This might be something we see from them a lot this year because when they're at their best, and the Titan defense steps up here, and down he goes. The corner blitz gets there as he goes down for a loss of seven. 
Three nothing after one on EA Sports. Second quarter from Miami. It's the Dolphins with the football. So a tough situation to overcome here. Third and 17. Back to throw. Jarrett. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. Now he's loose down the middle of the field. And the way off the Miami touchdown. Jalen Waddle, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Dolphins have taken the lead. And this is up and good to make it 7-3. A drive there of just four plays. And it was finished off by a Jalen Waddle touchdown. The kicking team out for Miami as they will send this one away. And he'll just sit on this one as their drive will start at the 25. Out come the Titans now. It's been very much a slow start for them. Three drives and just the three points, CD. Yeah, if you're into the points per drive ratio, that answer is one. And that's not going to get it done in a ball game. They've got to find a way to finish these drives in end zones, not having balls go through goalposts. Now, during that run, an injury here. We got one of those big blockers in some discomfort. We'll get an update when we come back to Hard Rock Stadium. Here's Spears on second down. And he'll get a couple up to the 29. Two yards on the first down carry, and then followed up by two yards on the second down carry. Well, that's definitely not going to be enough to get the job done. Wasn't the expression three yards in the cloud of dust? <laughs> now they're going to need six on third down to keep the drive going. And I don't think he got there. No. He's short by maybe a foot, maybe. Call it fourth and inches. On now is the Titans punter as he'll punt it away for the second time. His first punt, 45 yards. This looks good as well. This is taken at the 18. Following the punt return here, there's someone shaken up. We'll get an update when we come back to Miami. First down Miami as they get set to start the drive. Throwing to start the drive. Jarrett. This will be caught. It's Waddle. And he'll be taken down, but not before they reach the 50. A very solid gain of 27. So in the second quarter, he's already up over 100 yards receiving now. And isn't 100 the magic number for a really good game for a receiver? So he got a chance to really shatter that and have a profound effect on this game. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. A uh, short one here caught by McBride. And he'll go down inside the 45 before going out of bounds. That coach is always hard on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end. Let him get some rack. Yeah, when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come up and put a hit on him, do they? Now a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. Again, he'll drop to throw. And it'll find the open man. That's complete. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Titans' 23. Nice third down conversion at even 20 yards. For the kind of game he's had so far, you had to know that on third down, that they would be looking his way, and they did for big yardage and a first down. I think the defense fell asleep at the switch on that one. I would have doubled him, tripled him, anything to keep the ball out of his hands. And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. Two yards the loss, second and 12. They have three tight ends in that formation. That's almost a universal sign that they're planning to run the football. But how about the defense there? They met force with force and caused a stack up behind the line of scrimmage and threw him for a loss. 
to throw on second down. Jarrett, a uh, short one here, caught by McBride. The result, only four yards there on the play. And third and eight now. They'll be in search of eight yards here as they hope to convert the first down. To throw on third down, Jarrett. That is caught. And they'll get this down to the 10. He's exceeded his receiving yards from a week ago, and we're still in the first half. It's a first down. That's a pretty good throw on the curl route there. Third down, and they pick up a first. Defense should be aware for that, right? Yeah, they should be aware, but it was so hard to yeah, It's not easy. Because <laughs> when, they, when they sell that route really well, you think they're going upfield, then they curl back, show their numbers to the quarterback, and complete the play. Now second and nine from the 10. And they'll go right back to Pierce. Looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. They're two for two on third down conversions on this drive. This one tough. They need nine yards on third down. Now, here's a look for the end zone, but that one's going to wind up incomplete. Well, he certainly thought he had a window to push that ball downfield, but as soon as he released the throw, the corner was there to slam that window shut. Patterson's kick is good. And they push the lead up to a touchdown now in 10 to 3. So a nice kick there as they add three to the lead. And from what I've seen so far, Brandon, I think they've been the better of the two teams here in the first half. So even though you want the touchdown, I think that's a nice job there to put three points on the board. Taking it about the one. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. The Titans now just about ready to take over. Just a lone field goal for them so far, trailing 10-3 as they come up first and 10. They'll start this drive out on the ground. They'll get a yard, and that's all as they get him down at the 28. Second and nine. Defensively, we always know that he is tough in run support, and I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. 23 yards the pick up there. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. They'll look to throw here on first down. He finds his man complete. It's Gonzalez. And he's got this down to the 35. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. And time to give some credit to the big fellows, the offensive line here, because you've got to have good protection on crossing routes because you've got to give your receiver time to work all the way across the field. That time, able to scan the field, spot his receiver moving left to right, and make a good, accurate throw. Thank you, guys. Just a yard on the pick up there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. One yard gain brings up second and nine. He'll look to throw. He's got Burton here. It'll be a gain of five, and it's third and four now. throw nowhere to go here he lost the football and this is picked up by the Dolphins and he'll return this ball across midfield to the 47 yard line the pocket collapsed around him I know we talk about it a lot but a QB has to have that sixth sense doesn't he he really does and I know of one team at one point was training their quarterback with that time frame, and any time he didn't get rid of the ball within this, the right amount of time, they would blow a horn or blow a whistle to show him this is what that time is, just what you're talking about, training him to understand this is the amount you have, make sure the ball's gone. Didn't happen in this case. Following the fumble recovery, Jarrett, and this one's incomplete. That incompletion certainly slows things down a little bit and brings up a very important call for second and long. What do you do? Run and try and get some yardage and make it third and manageable? Or challenge the coverage again, hoping for a bigger game? 
Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. Well, so far on this drive, they've done some good work. They force incompletions on first and second down, bring up third and ten. That brings up the big question. Do they bring pressure, or do they play coverage on this down? He's got his target. That's complete. And he takes us just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. Call that a very strong gain of 24. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme. Get a little... That is caught by Waddle. Touchdown Miami. Jalen Waddle with his second touchdown of the game. Fourth of the year. The Dolphins have taken a two-touchdown lead now. What a first half he is compiling here. He's already over 100 yards receiving and now two touchdowns, CD. Brandon, you know I don't like to play the game where you start projecting when you're at a certain point. Well, let's face it, he's off to a tremendous start. So 200 yards, four touchdowns. I don't think anything's out of the question right now. He's blowing up coverages. You've got to double him every snap. Otherwise, he's going to defeat you on almost every play. And this will not be brought out. It's a touchback. The Titans set and ready to go on offense. Last time out, they had the fumble. That led to the touchdown. Not a great look on either side of the ball as the defense gave up the points too, Charles. But they've got to take care of the football and do better here on this possession. It's certainly been a tough stretch partner for both of those units, and they kind of put their defensive mates in a really tough spot there by dropping the ball on the ground. But an easy way to make it up to them, get out there now and get some points on this drive. Second and six. And that'll be incomplete. Shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. Now back to throw. And he'll find the Conquero. He's got it. And he's able to get this to the 40-yard line before he's out of bounds. And a big 32-yard play on third. Ah, so often when we're watching a football game, we see one with a lot of ebbs and flows, and this one is no different. And sometimes you just need a big play to wake you up a bit. And they get one right there, that shot of caffeine this offense was looking for. They'll run on first down. Winslow. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. So a step in the wrong direction. Now they'll look to make amends on second and 14. They'll keep it on the ground. Winslow. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. This will be a loss of three. And now a much tougher third down looming. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. This pass deep for a Conquo. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. Well, he's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Jalen Waddle running out, and that means that the Dolphins ready for another drive on offense. He might be on his way to a record-setting performance. So good here, we're only in the second quarter. And it's so interesting when we watch these types of days unfold for a receiver because they need a quarterback to win it accurately, people to block for the quarterback. So many other variables. But boy, he's getting it done, and in a big way right now, he wants to rock on every snap. Yeah, he's counting his yards in the hundreds, not the tens. Throwing on first down. Jarrett looking middle, and that's complete. He'll be dropped after a game of about six across the 30 to the 31. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. Now this is going to be a quarterback draw. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. Now the Dolphins going to burn the first of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. Now the throw on third down, knocked away and in 
incomplete. So drive one, they had the field goal. Drive two, touchdown. And now here on drive three, looks like they're going to have to punt. At least they were finally able to reverse the trend because giving up the field goal, then the touchdown, it's almost like they finally got to the offensive side of the ball and said, okay, we've got the system to shut you down. Take it in at the 22. And nine yards there on the return following a punt of 47. And it'll be Titan football. The Titans going to go back on offense here late in this first half. And with him down two scores, you wonder if they might try and put something together, even if it's just to get into field goal range. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Oh, everything falling apart now. Another one intercepted. And he's able to get it back to the 33-yard line. The CD, I know it's just his second year in the league as a quarterback, but that's going to be one when he flips on the tape. He's like, ah, I shouldn't have thrown that ball. No doubt about it, and his coaching staff will be emphatic about it. he shouldn't have thrown that ball. But remember, second year, as you noted, on-the-job training. So he's got to take this feedback that he's getting, negative or otherwise, and turn it into positives moving forward. The Dolphins taking over now late in this first half. And now following that turnover, they've got an opportunity here to try to cash in with good field position before intermission. They'll set up to run the quarterback draw. And that play is blown up, losing yardage back at the 35. The Dolphins going to take their second timeout as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. Hey, we could easily read his mind there. There was just no place to go. Tried to bounce it and get outside on the draw. Yeah, but the defense wasn't thinking pass. They knew that they were running it. And I love the way that they covered all the gaps. You know, we can do all the lettering and the numbering and all those things. But those run fits that we talk about all the time, each person fitting in the proper spot on defense, you see the end result when they do that. McBride complete. And they have a first down and well into field goal range also at the 16 now. Well, sometimes our free game means do pay off, don't they? What are the guys in the room call? Well, they said it with a chuckle. They called it old reliable. Yeah, that means he doesn't move quite as fast as he used to, but he still knows all the tricks, doesn't he? Even that little gentle push off in order to get open, he finds a way to pick up a first down. Patterson's kick is good, and the Dolphins will add on to their lead. So they get the turnover in plus territory. The drive stalls out, but still able to get three out of that. Yeah, we were able to see an offense and a defense kind of mix and match with each other, didn't we? Both of them trying to make sure that they have the upper hand and the advantage. Offense trying to get to the end zone. Defense, of course, trying to hold them to a field goal attempt. And it wasn't a guaranteed lock three from where they started. So, you know, the offense has to be happy to come away with those three points. So we reach halftime in what's been a fairly one-sided game so far. As we send you up to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman and our EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Brandon, we'll get back to you guys in a bit. But first, time for a trip around the league on this final weekend of September. We'll start down at NRG Stadium as New England returns to the site of their Super Bowl 51 triumph to take on Houston. And it's the home team who are out in front. Tua Tungavailoa has thrown a touchdown pass. From there, let's head off and check out a second game. And they've got the lead in their ball game over the visiting Carolina Panthers. Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Dolphins in front, and they'll be in possession of the football first as the second half gets started. And this will not be returned, so the second half begins with a touchback. So now the Dolphins set to take over on offense. They were able to defeat Houston last week. They lead things here as well as they try to make it two victories in a row. They go play action here on first down. He's got this to Pickens. 
It's a big play there for Miami. 51 yards. Despite writing it down on my notes, I never give enough credit to the offensive line, and we have to here. The protection, that's what made this play a success. Quarterback had to wait for his crossing route to develop, and that takes a little bit of extra time. Excellent job by the big fellows up front. So barely time to catch our breath. Here's first and 10 just outside the red zone. Hand off right side to Pierce. And he is brought down at the 22 after a gain of two. And it brings up second down. Looking to throw. Jarrett, throw right side, going to be caught here by Waddle. And it stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. His first catch of this third quarter, he had seven in the first half. It's also a first down. Back to throw. Jarrett. And this is going to be intercepted. And the Titans are going to take possession here. It's a touchback, and they'll take over at the 20-yard line. So it was a drive that had real promise here to begin the third quarter, but ultimately derailed by the INT. And that was the position you wanted to be in, coming out to start this third quarter, get a nice drive going, looking for the end zone. Possibly got a little bit too greedy right there. The Titans offense gears up for their first possession of the second half. Now they just got a little help from their defense forcing the turnover. Now can they make that pay off in points? They need to, partner. They're down on the scoreboard. Need to take advantage of those opportunities. And this is a good one right in front of them. And he stopped right at the 25 after a gain of five. That ground game contained again there, Charles, and that's really a big reason that they're trailing right now. They give a lot of credit to that defensive front. That's exactly what they worked for all week to try and take away the run game, make them one-dimensional in the battle of game plans. Theirs has been superior. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. Looks like another empty possession offensively. And you're at that point in the game where you can't afford too many more of these. So this is going to require some heavy thinking on the sideline to figure out what they can do to crack this defense. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. It's taken to the 26. A 46-yard punt, eight yards on the return. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. The Dolphins offense now ready to go back out onto the field. A big mistake last time they were on the field, tossing that interception inside the red zone and really taking away what had been a pretty successful drive up to that point. Yeah, and I don't think there's any question about it. As they head out on the field for this drive, that whole offensive unit is just thinking of redemption. You know, they moved it really well, didn't pay it off. This time, they want to make sure that ball ends up in the end zone, and they're the ones possessing it. Yeah, Pierce gets it again on second down. And he's going to be stopped up quickly here. Just a yard up to the 39. And an extra defensive back out there for the Titans now here for third down. Looking to throw. Jarrett. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And they got him well across midfield down to the 40 before it's all said and done. 21 yards there on third down. Normally on third down and short yardage, you're thinking to throw to your tight end. It's just going to be a simple chain mover. But this time they let him roam down the field, and a nice dart picks up the first down and then some. Well, they'll run it here on the jet sweep. And that is well read there defensively. He was looking to use his speed to get the edge, but they said no way. Two yards the loss, second and 12. At the Titans, 42-yard line. Operating from the gun, Jarrett. A uh, short one here, caught by McBride. And he's going to get this down near the 30-yard line. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. First 
Pierce takes it straight ahead. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. He's got McBride here over the middle. He's up to 70 yards receiving now as that last catch gets him a first down. Operating from the gun, Jarrett. And it's caught. Touchdown! George Pickens from 19 yards away. And the Dolphins are able to widen their advantage. So another touchdown there. And even though we're still just here in the third quarter, kind of hard now to see them giving up this lead. And this is just an offense that's imposing its will right now. You name it, they're able to do it. If you're the play caller, whatever you want to select is there. You want to run it, you want to throw it. Pick a play, any play. They're rocking and rolling right now. Extra point by Patterson, up and good. And the lead is now 24. The kicking team out for Miami as they will send this one away. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand... They've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. Over the middle, and there's a diving catch. It'll be a gain of 16 for number 16. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. On first down, Winslow. And he is going to lose yardage here. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. I think this running game, or should I say, lack of one, is making this defense look better than what they really are. On second down, Winslow. And he's dropped right at the 40. Gain of three. Another modest gain there on that one. And I think, Charles, you can probably pin part of the deficit on a failure on their part to really get this ground game established. Yeah, and they've really struggled to be multidimensional in this one, haven't they, partner? Because they have to be extremely one-dimensional now if they hope to get back into this game. Got to do it by throwing the football and hope to have success in the air. So one first down on that drive, and that's it. Forced to take the deep shot on third down and couldn't hit it. Now they have to punt this one away. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. And no one there to stop it. Hits at the eight, but it carries all the way into the end zone for a touchback. Now out comes their leader and the captain of this offense back onto the field. A solid first half for him, and so far a good start to the second half. And I'm going to try not to go overboard with praise here, but I can't help it. He is playing so well, really accurate with the ball, finding guys open downfield and finding the end zone three times. That'll help, the, that'll help offset the one interception. Absolutely. Just that, just that one pick with the three touchdowns so far. On first and ten, Jarrett. Out route, he finds his man. It's Jones. Calling a gain of three on the play. And that'll make it second down. It's vitally important to wrap him up immediately because if you let that big guy get ahead of steam up, boy, then you've got real trouble trying to get him down. But they're able to hold him to a short gain on first down. Now a throw here, hold in. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. These two have hooked up nine times now this afternoon as they pick up the first. And while we may be looking at the 
scoreboard. This offense certainly is now because they're showing no signs of backing down, even with a three-score lead here in the third quarter. I think they keep taking their shots. They've seen blown leads happen throughout this league. They don't want to fall victim to it themselves. So first and ten, and if they score on this drive, might have to start digging in our second-half blowout material. Off the bootleg, Jarrett. Right back to Jalen Waddle for another catch. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. This is just more of the same. This defense has had no answer on a lot of these throws. They've let these receivers run wild, and here's another completion for good yardage. First and 10, it's Pierce. Oh, fine work there as he gets this thing down to the 11-yard line. Another good gain. That's now 35 yards combined on those last two plays. Now a first and 10 at the 11. And this is a guy who's going to get some carries going forward. Picked up as a free agent just this past week. How about fresh legs, right? We always talk about bringing a guy in, provides that spark, and maybe a little bit of extra energy. The time is called. Looks like a member of the Titans in some discomfort out there. We'll get an update when we come back to Hard Rock Stadium. On second down, here's Pierce. And he'll be taken down here at about the 11. Two yards gets him back to where they started, but now third and 10. Back to throw, Jarrett. And he will take it in for a Dolphins touchdown. Taking it in from 11 yards out. And the Dolphins will add on to their lead here in the final minute of the third. If you're going to play quarterback in the NFL, you've got to have great vision and you've got to remain calm when things break down in the pocket. Both of those traits are on display there. He surveys the situation, sees the middle of the field open, so he's just going to step up and take it himself. Very well done there. Extra point by Patterson, up and good. And the lead grows even larger here in the third quarter. The kicking team out for Miami as they will send this one away. This taken in at the goal line. And able to get this out to the 25. Here's the Titan offense now as they make their way back onto the field. Well, this has been a tough one for them, Charles. They've struggled really on both sides of the football. And one thing that's really plagued them, the turnovers. They've had issues keeping the football in their possession. And every game that's ever been played, <laughs> all coaches talk about taking care of the football and limiting turnovers. And in this one, after we saw that first turnover, we worried that things would snowball. And it certainly did, especially on the scoreboard. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Well, they had the run for no gain. Now they'll try again from the 25 on second and 10. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. Got his man, Akonkwo. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Back to throw. He finds his man complete. It's Gonzalez. Touchdown, Titans! A big play there. 63 yards. And the Titans are finally into the end zone here in this fourth quarter. A nice throw there by the second-year quarterback. And I don't believe that was the kind of play he would have made as a rookie because usually your rookie season is a continuation of your college days. A lot of one read, and if you don't have it, you just take off and go. Now he's settled in the pocket a little bit more, reading the field and getting to a second and sometimes third progression. That was a nice play. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And no chance to get away as they'll get him down at about the 17-yard line. So now here come the Dolphins. 
Well, the win for them at this point seems pretty assured. I mean, still a decent amount of time left here in the fourth quarter, Charles, but you got the football. You're up three scores. They have to be feeling really good about where they're at. I love your observation skills, partner, because I think you saw them charge out to the field, fired up about another chance to get into the end zone. Looks to me like this group is ready to crush any hope left on the opposing sideline, and they want to do it with some gusto, too. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. Another carry for Pierce. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. No gain on the play there. Second down. No gain on the play. Brings up second and 10 at the 43-yard line. Waddle the motion man right. He'll get it here on the jet sweep. Oh, and this one it may need to go back to the drawing board. He's going to be swallowed up right away. They wind up losing a couple there, so they go behind the original line of scrimmage. And now third and 11 coming up. Going for it with Pierce. Now, during that run, an injury here. We've got one of those big blockers in some discomfort. We'll get an update when we come back to Miami. Here's A.J. Cole now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. This is taken around the 12. Just a net of 34 there following a punt of 44 yards. And they will take over first and 10. Here's Tennessee ready to begin this drive offensively. Where we stand right now in the fourth quarter, this one pretty much out of reach. And Charles, I know they're going to be disappointed about several things with this ball game, but the self-inflicted wounds, they've had several turnovers. You would have to think that's going to be something they're going to discuss heavily in the film session in the coming days. You're yeah, absolutely right about that, partner, because they're going to have to sit in that film room and watch every error that they made and figure out how to not do it in the future. And mentally, I think a lot of the guys are already starting to think about, okay, how do we put this behind us and get better for the next time out? This, they'll use as motivation for the rest of the time that they play to hopefully never be in this type of situation again. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. Going for Burton, and he's got it. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. The time is called. Looks like a member of the Titans in some discomfort out there. We'll get an update when we come back to Hard Rock Stadium. So now first and 10 as they've crossed into Miami territory at the 27. On first down, Winslow. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Second and seven. Brings up second and seven. They'll keep it on the ground. Winslow. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play, and it's going to bring up a third down. Looking to throw. Nowhere to turn here, and he's going to go down. Back at about the 37-yard line. Brought down by multiple defenders, and it's a loss of 12. Now, why do you go out and trade for a guy like this defensively? Well, an instant impact in your pass rush is reason number one. And let's think about it. You want a guy who can create big plays for your team, takeaways, fumbles, you name it. That's what you want from a big-time player on the defensive side of the ball. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter, let's see how this plays out. Now on fourth down here, that pass knocked away and incomplete. The Titans try it, but ultimately they fail on fourth down. And the Dolphins' defense is able to hold. Fourth down and they take to the air, which really isn't a major surprise, but how about the coverage they're able to bat it down? They'll start on the ground with Pierce. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. This defense starting to buckle down when they need to, and right now they're winning this fourth quarter, losing the game, but they're winning in the fourth quarter. And what a fine line it is about what they're trying to get done because 
They're down, so they obviously need the football, need a score, but they can't be so aggressive as to give up their edge, their gaps, and have the offense hit them with a big play. So give them five yards there on the pitch and catch. And now third down and six to go. Looking to throw, Jarrett. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. Well, their passing attack, even though that one was incomplete, has been really sharp in this one. It's resulted in a lot of touchdowns, and it looks like they're not going to stop throwing the football until the very end of this one. Well, that will certainly make everyone involved on offense pretty happy because that gives them all a chance to pad their stats a bit. But as far as the actual need, you and I both know they can just run this clock out because this one, it was over a long time ago. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And the Dolphins rush gets home. Down he goes. A well-designed corner blitz that gets him for a loss of eight yards. Guys with his talent in the pocket aren't supposed to be getting hit like this. And you know an intense conversation with the offensive line is going to occur after this one. Might not be from him, but the offensive line coach will have plenty to say about this game. Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. Now a throw left sideline here is complete. So the completion results there in nine yards. And that'll bring up a third down. He'll drop to throw. Pressure comes and down he goes. Taken down for the fifth time this game. Multiple defenders there to get him. You can almost see all the defenders rubbing their hands together with glee because we all know they relish the chance to bring down a quarterback of his caliber. Anyone who brings him down has plenty to talk about. Not just a sack, but a big win built off the efforts of this defense. So a change of possession here on the punt. And out will come the offense as they take over. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. They've got a chance now to put this game away following that last defensive stop and punt. And good vision there as he's across midfield and down to the 45-yard line. 98 yards rushing for him now on 17 carries. Well, we're beyond the tone setting right now. This guy's been the bell cow all day, and he'll continue to rely on him to move the chains, drain the clock, and lead his team. First down, they go right back to Pierce. And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. And he'll cross over out of bounds right at the 25. It's another first down as this time they get an even 20. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. All right, rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. And he will take this across midfield and down to the 48-yard line. Well, that interception at least offers them a glimmer of hope here in the fourth quarter. That well, certainly does if their offense goes out now and makes it pay off by getting into the end zone. And if it does, then they get a chance to get back out on the field and try and do it again. Maybe they can force that offense into more and more mistakes and give them a chance to get back into this one totally. We have still a three-score hill to climb. We'll see if they can do it. They'll come out throwing here on first down. Under pressure, and down he goes. Jalen Phillips able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. Well, collectively as a defense, Charles, I think if you get four sacks a game, you're feeling really good. Now they have six as a unit. And that type of a number, it's just staggering because there's so many ways to try and counteract it. But in this case, they've got no answers for this unrelenting pressure coming at their quarterback. Now they're in some hot water now. After that sack, it's second and 21. They'll set up a throw. He's got Burton here. 
When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. The Dolphins get there this time, and they bring him down. Jalen Phillips giving him once again his third sack of the afternoon. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. A shot downfield for Burks. And this is caught, but they say out of bounds. That would have been a first down, but he couldn't stay in. And as a result, they're going to have to give up the football. Well, they clearly made a conscious decision here to be more aggressive in the late stages of this game here in the second half. And I get it. In this situation, you know, if you want to be aggressive out near midfield, you feel good about your defense maybe, or just, hey, I thought I had a proper play call. But how about the guys that just stopped them? How good do they feel right now? Right, you want to go for it here? We shut you down. They're over on the bench right now feeling great. And Pierce gets it again on second down. They follow up the first down one yard run with a minimal gain of two. I like it. I like the call. Still an opportunity to run the football and chew up a little more time off the clock. On third down, Jarrett. And to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. There's absolutely been no stopping this offense today. They already have the big lead, obviously, here in the fourth quarter. They could coast to the end, but right now they're not passing up any chances to put up some garbage time yardage. And, partner, why would they? Because who knows the next time you'll be playing as well as you have today. When you're in that zone, you go ahead and take full advantage of it. You don't worry about your opponent. You just worry about what you're doing. So a victory here for the Miami Dolphins. And to be frank, Charles, probably not too many people surprised at how this one turned out. Yeah, I don't think so at all. I mean, they're such a good football team. They were at home. You know, you walked in and you looked at the advantages and you saw that they had most of them. It'd take a lot to try and even it up. I just thought two words for this ball game: methodical and predictable. And both of them came together. So for Miami, they're on a nice early roll as they move to three and one with a win here. And they'll get to stay home again next week. Meanwhile, for Tennessee, they'll sink now to 0-4. And, and they'll try and turn things around next week as they have a date at MetLife Stadium with the New York Jets. And for Charles Davis and our entire crew, I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports.